Boys. It's the Bennington Show on a uh, Thursday. Um, Ron Bennington, Gail Bennington. Yo. Stanley Bennington. What's up? Looks like we're starting to get to the point where we can hear Bowie without busting up. Um, no one else answered me, so yeah. maybe we're not <laughs> I sure. Thought that, <laughs> well, I, last, I, I thought, thought maybe I said no. <laughs> I thought there was a follow-up to <laughs> Well, the, the follow-up was supposed to come out of you guys. Okay, got it. I, last night, I had a moment where I was uh, reading an article, and I felt like, okay, this is now, this is a thing. And then later that night, something set me off, thinking about a certain song just kind of popped into my head, and and I, it just became very real to me again. Okay. It's weird how that happens. Well, you know, uh, what set me back off today is Alan Reichman passed away. Yeah. And immediately I said, another damn member of the 69 Club. I don't know what it is that you look at a lot of these young guys they are doing so great, and they all end up in the 69 Club. Um, listen to this. The 69 Club now. Okay. Because right. it used to be the 27 Club with the Hendrix and the Morrison and the Janis Joplin. That's say. Um, it's kind of bullshit. Uh, it's dumb. But listen to this. David Bowie, mm-hmm. Harold Ramis, Alan Reichman, uh, Dennis Farina, Bonnie Franklin, Andrea L., Ken Stabler, Dusty Rhodes, Jesus. Jerry Orbach, and the one that took us all, shockingly, King John II. That was the worst. What the hell kind of mysterious thing about there is this 69 club? 69 is the new 27. Oh, God. What's <laughs> sexier? Boys. Uh, so that's up on the eye bang. Is there anything that you want to add to it? Uh, it's quite a mystery. It's a good I, club. You're in good company. I got to say, who sent that in to us, too? I don't have all my papers in front of me right now. But uh, someone sent the, that in today. Uh, the famous 69 Club. Terrible. Yeah, it's killing me. Ken Mills. Ken Mills. Bum, bum, bum. Ken Mills has come up with the 69 Club. In the meantime, Joey Jojo came up with nothing more than a kid touching thing. Mm-hmm. And Chris Stanley wrote to me, I could do my picks today. Now, first of all, <laughs> got him. Got him. Here's my opinion of Chris Stanley. Okay. Alcoholism, <laughs> drug addiction, gambling addiction. Yeah. How about just pick one? Why go for the trifecta? I want I want it all. I want if I can't now, do no more. This is the other thing that bothers me. That you think it's an asset that you bring to the show. Just like, I'll be drinking it up at the uh, Christmas party, boss. Don't worry. Got I'm going to be Mr. Fun. And Mr. Fun is somebody who makes other people have fun. Yeah. Not just has fun themselves. So you drinking straight from a bottle while screaming pussy at Vito and Joe doesn't make you fun, dude. No, that's not fun. I thought it's like fun by osmosis, where the fun leaks out of me into the air. And still. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my favorite thing that night was Joey is saying to you earlier. I just want to thank you, man, because you put me in my place, and you really are a great boss. And then, <laughs> and then seconds later, say to me, I'm just tired of that asshole forcing me and Vito to drink. And there might have been four minutes and 30 seconds. And, and both of those things made me laugh hard. That's great. They should have drank more. I would have been less angry. Do you think Chris Stanley can make it to the 69 Club? Yeah, I'm going to make it to the I think Chris Stanley thinks he's going to make it to the 69 Club. I'll be shocked if you make it to the 33 Club <laughs> with Belushi and Jesus. That's good company as well. You almost didn't make it to the whatever you are now club. Yeah. When you fell and hit your head or whatever. It was the 32 and a third club. I was about to fucking be in. <laughs> it was rough. But I, I survived with just a barely what is head your birthday. Wound. August 8th. So what's your sign there? What's the, I'm a Leo. That's the shittiest sign of well, all. It's a lion. It's a great sign. <laughs> Lying is what you do every time you come in here. <laughs> That's why you're always no. shaking that mane. No. Oh! What's that supposed to mean? It doesn't matter what it means. <laughs> she said something. That's all that matters. 
All that matters is we're using it against you. Shit. Hey, I got some great news for everybody coming in a little later on today. The Handsome Vault. Yeah! Also, I guess we uh, make um, a uh, an opportunity to steal from the 420 Club. Uh, we're booking Christina from, from 420. 420 Blaze It. <laughs> That's going to return very soon. By the, this is what a fucking scope whore Chris Stanley has turned into. He tried to wear boots yesterday thinking there'd be another boot this. Yeah. And I, I mean, even... I really wanted to get back on that show. Did you notice, did you notice that I had to give him the boot on what's that a boot? Yeah. Because, you know, he was making better, so then he was trying to talk about football. He knows that's it's not what me that- and Cashmere's show is about. He knows that. Well, earlier that day, I had done talk at football with Ron, so I was, I just wanted to yeah, cross you your own time. Crossover. Now, you were saying you were trying to get Joey Jojo on that. I am trying to get, as of right now, the tentative date for the next What's That a Boot? Is well, I don't know the date, but it's tomorrow. It's Friday. Oh, really? Already? Huh? Yes, we're oh, thinking boy. about doing another <laughs> episode. So we would like to have Joe on if he's wearing his boots. I'll be there with my boots strapped. Who knows, baby? I'll have some fancy boots. Oh, we would love to have you as a guest. You have great style, so. Well, it's great to hear. I'll have my boots on just in case anyone drops out or whatever, mm-hmm. you know. Are you worried that somebody could crack a scope and you wouldn't be on it? Matter of fact, D-Rock came in today and said, uh, are you ever not on Periscope, dude? I mean, I wake up in the morning and there's three. And fucking Chris, I can see that he was steaming inside, but he was just flat-footed mouth agape. <laughs> well, come on, E-Rock. I enjoy Periscope, and what's the big deal? <laughs> He's making it a bad thing, when I think it's a it good is, thing. It has turned into a, a bad thing. Much oh. like anything, it's with you. It's become an addiction. Yeah. I will be scoping this weekend. I'm letting you all Maybe know. if you only did it uh, a little bit every day. And yeah. I mean drink. <laughs> <laughs> Russ, in Iowa. Yes, sir. I, I love the show one, but Chris. Yes? Can you tell me of any of your picks last week that you win? I, be, I, well, I, I at the, by Friday I said every, every team's going to win. Two teams covered, two and two. No, that, two and two no. makes you, you a loser said, for the weekend, my friend. That is, that's a push, basically. Damn straight. No, what is it? You, you got fucking money going out. Team. Oh shit! Sorry. No, you're doing great, dude. <laughs> uh, just every home team that he picked, yeah. lost. Russ doesn't understand the line. There's a lot of non betters yeah. who don't understand the line. And he was taking the dogs at home, meaning that he was getting points. Yeah. Right. And in two of the games that worked out, by the way, Chris fucking fails to say that he boxes and everything else. The, yeah, oh, yeah, parlays and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, it's, this is all bullshit. I mean, I mean, he lost throughout the weekend. <laughs> I got beat up. But you're going to do your locks this week let's do this right. if you're going to do it on the fucking program make it a lock yeah there's only four games that's it pick four that's it i'm not asking you on a regular week to you know go picking between 32 teams 16 different bets no pick four easy we're going to lock town today ron do, do, do. there's no chance these don't come in by the way i had this uh and i'll say it Indian guy driving me home who was uh-huh. from India. Uh, and he said to me, are you betting for the, the are you picking uh, the Powerball? And I'm like, uh, yeah, I have. And he goes, how many, how many tickets did you get? I go one. He goes, are you crazy? You're never going to win with one ticket. I go, dude, we're not going to, uh, we're not going to win with a hundred thousand tickets or else there would be corporations signed up and doing this. Yeah, of course. I go, I have no chance to win. But I, I buy the one ticket, so I feel the same thrill that everybody else does of, hey, what would happen if I won? But if I go and buy $2,500 worth, <laughs> now I'm a fucking loser. <laughs> I now, don't feel like a loser for my one. Yeah, then it's just a small gamble for a big reward that you'll never get, as opposed to a big gamble that you'll yeah. never get. I dropped 100 bucks on tickets last night. That's no, you I didn't. I, yeah. That's a fucking loser. But see, see, I went to different places. I thought that would end. <laughs> you know what's very no, funny? When I woke up today, I noticed that, like, they just said somebody in Florida and somebody. Like, you don't even have to check the number. You just know it's not your state. But I thought that this was funny. Even if they would have said on the east side 
of New York. I would have been thrilled and jumped up and ran, but the odds against me still would have been enormous. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, whenever I see, whenever I see the report in New York, just New York, right? Like, yes, <laughs> yes, there's a chance. What the fucking numbers? <laughs> Shit, no. That's still somewhere around a million to one. <laughs> yeah, the state of New York, not even New York City. <laughs> uh, but even if it was New York City. I guarantee you a million people in New York City played that. Yeah. Guarantee you. So you're saying the bodega on the block where I live didn't sell me the ticket. <laughs> Even if it was that, the odds are still long shot. Um, all right. So let's get into your picks. Okay. This first game of the weekend, Chiefs at Patriots. Chiefs at Patriots. The line is... Patriots minus five. Mm. So it'll be Chiefs plus five. I saw that game last week with the Chiefs. The Patriots, Rob Gronkowski didn't fucking practice this week. I feel upset fucking special Chiefs plus five at fucking Foxborough. There you have it. I know one thing about this, Chris Stanley. He likes getting points. Yeah. No matter what's happening. It feels good. Because you feel like you're winning now. Five to nothing. Look, I'm already up right now. Now, if your team scores first, you find yourself, you're up 12 nothing. You just start fucking ordering. (laughs) You're fucking calling your man and buying Coke over the phone. Oh, it's spending. I'm fucking making it rain. This is the the first game of the goddamn fucking season. I'm feeling like a goddamn punt return. (laughs) Or kickoff return. All right. Just slow down. All right. You're not making sense. (laughs) You game could number be part of the sixty nine club. Game number two. Green Bay Packers at the Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals are minus seven. I saw that game last week with the goddamn <laughs> Redskins. That second half, Aaron Rodgers yeah. was unstoppable. I think he's an unstoppable touchdown machine. Packers, give me them fucking Packers. Now, do you think one of the reasons that he was unstoppable no. is that he was playing the Redskins? No, he's got he's found his he's found his mojo back. That's what I like to say. I know that this is about the Pats. I don't know what's gonna happen in that game. That, I don't know what Pats are showing up. That's why I'm saying say take the goddamn Chiefs, take that plus five. Have you seen the Chiefs play until last week though? Not really, no. Yeah, I know they won I eleven games that in a row. That team was fucking so <laughs> under the radar on the East Coast. I was just like it was like looking at Oh, Chiefs won yesterday. But I couldn't tell you anything that happened. <laughs> I mean, Alex Smith is their quarterback. All right, so you're taking the Chiefs. I'm taking the Chiefs plus five. Plus five. And now you got the Packers. Plus seven. You I mean, that's a fucking touchdown, love Ron. your dogs. <laughs> Give me dogs all day long. Well, your dog's off the road, though. <laughs> like last week, you were dogs at home, but... Road yeah. dog. I was a home dog last Jesse week. James. <laughs> this week, I'm a fucking road dog. All right? Come with a badass Billy Gunn, because I'm fucking road dog. Well, well no, okay. Jesse I mean, James is the road Call dog. me New Age Outlaw, then. Well, here's the thing. You're getting fucking rowdy, rowdy, and bowdy, bowdy right that's, now. That's me. That's how I do it. <laughs> and then Mr. Ass would come out for whatever his dumb thing was. <laughs> what was his thing that you said? Oh, you didn't know. Uh, hold oh, on. you didn't know? <laughs> you guys better call, call somebody. somebody. All right, that's, those are the Saturday games. So that's how you make money on Saturday. You fucking take the Chiefs plus five, you take the Packers plus seven. I got two nice games to watch on Saturday, mm-hmm. don't I? I mean, Jesus Christ, the Packers are plus... Aaron Rodgers is getting plus seven. Arians doesn't know what to do against him. Yeah, but everybody has been telling us all year that's not the same Aaron Rodgers. There's no blocking. There's no mm. receivers from the throat to... Look, he's got Devontae Adams. He's got the likes of the James Joneses of the world. Randall Cobb. He's going to be fine. Okay. Trust me. This is easy fucking money. All right. We all trust right. you. That's it's not to trust. You're such a big winner. You live in that big house and you drive that fancy car. Of course I'm going to believe in you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Where the fuck is Jarata? Indonesia? Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Indonesia. Up. Indonesia, yeah. They're shooting to join up as I sit here. All right. So those are your Saturday games. Now we're going to move to Sunday. The Seattle Seahawks at... The Carolina Panthers. Line is minus two and a half. That's all? That's it. Now, Ron, you know me. I like fucking getting points. I know you do. I fucking love. I love me some points. So I'm, oh, my God. Uh, like, no, no, like now I'm like I'm eating up the points. That's disgusting. I don't like that sound. <laughs> 
Now, I took two fucking road dogs before this, didn't I? Yeah. You did. <laughs> you guess what? Is, should this segment go on this long? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to explain my thought process. Now, you saw that game last week. <laughs> Let me see your thought process. You see M&M's, you eat them. You see cocaine, you snort it. So you see beer, you drink it. <laughs> Seahawks at the Panthers. Minus two and a half. Give me the fucking Seahawks. Russell Wilson's going to the goddamn divisional game. Plus two and a half. Wow. I'll tell you this. I'll be cheering along with you on that game. Fuck Cam Newton. I don't like that Superman pose. Sorry, Panthers bros. By the way, I think you're wrong, but I'll be happy if you're right. Look... The is Vikings. Marshawn Lynch coming back? Can we get Beast Mode? Yeah, Beast Mode is coming Beast back. Mode. Beast Mode's been practicing. I heard that last week he was practicing. Pete Carroll's not lying to us. Beast Mode's going to be there. It was like 24 hours out last time when he said no. Beast Mode's all about it. Peace Mode? <laughs> Beast Mode. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> lovely. Like Cat Stevens? I'm in Peace Mode right now. Now I'm riding on a Peace Mode. <laughs> now your final game of the weekend. Oh my God! This goes on forever. Right. Steelers. If there was eight thank games, thank I'd quit. God, there's only four. There's games. only four. It's fun. If there was eight games, I'd retire. Steelers at Broncos. The line is minus seven, as of right now. The line's been really crazy on this game. Earlier in the week, it was a pick'em. Yeah, what is going on with that? All right, so what's going on is Antonio Brown apparently had a concussion last week, but then people said he was faking it. But he's been going through the uh, concussion protocol. So right. that he might or might not play, they don't know. And Ben Roethlisberger is fucked up; his shoulders trashed. So they don't. I mean, they say he's going to start. They say he's going to play, but everyone's freaked out that he's not going to be able to. And then they'll pull him and put in Landry. So that's what's fucking up the line right now. If Ben Roethlisberger is not in that game, it's over, right? Yeah, it's done. I mean, the, the Denver Broncos defense is ridiculous, and they have Peyton Manning back. <laughs> So, Steelers at Broncos. The line right now is Broncos minus seven. I go road dog with the Chiefs, road dog with the Packers, road dog with the Seahawks. Guess what? Broncos are going to take this at minus seven. Broncos what? minus seven. You just broke your code. Broncos minus seven. I'm a code breaker right now. Can I tell you something? I've never cheered for the Broncos in my fucking life. I know. And I will be cheering for the Broncos because of a piece of shit called Joey Porter who stole that game away from another team I care not about, the Cincinnati Bengals. I thought that was the most fucked up thing I've ever seen in my life. It was ridiculous. That whole game was a fucking shit show. It was. You got one guy faking a fucking concussion, concussion know, and, disgusting and, and pick it up. And then a coach walking over and starting to... I'm going to say this, use the N-bomb and the other F-bomb hmm. until he was pushed out of, standing in their huddle and was pushed out of the huddle and that fucking Pac-Man got, got fucking uh, nailed for it. Come on, Pac-Man. You fucking had every right. Now, I'll be betting on none of the games oh, come this on. week. This is easy. I'll go over. Chiefs plus five. Packers plus seven. Seahawks plus two and a half. Broncos minus seven. Easy I'm on a money. new mental health program to live my life exactly the opposite of Chris Stanley. Oh, that's so smart. I feel yeah. like we could write a book It'll where we go, just yeah. take his day by day rituals, yeah. things that he does, and advise to do complete opposite. Just say, uh, Chris, which one of these vacations would you take? Which one of these flights yeah. go the opposite way? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, these are these are fucking solid picks. These are locks. You're a fucking unmagic eight ball, is what your ass <laughs> is. Lock it up. Mike, Idaho. Chris, fuck you. What Why? game are you watching? They were running the ball, not passing it in the second half. What game are you watching? Aaron Rodgers will not be stopped. Packers plus seven, give me them points. That's what I said. It's going right. to fucking happen, Why dude. Why do you like the points? I want them because because oh. it tastes good. Happy New Year, guys. Oh. Yeah, Mike, come on, eat it up. No, oh. stop making I that hate sound. that, too. I hate I that, I fucking sound. hate it. So. Ew. Why do you do that? <laughs> because there was some juice from the points left over. I wanted, I I wanted to sop it up. Juice. Give me them so points, juice. <laughs> They were pat they were fucking right. running the ball. Now, running here's the some ball. people that have uh, tweeted in. Yeah. Sick Roy said he's willing to bet that there are more fucks than goddamns than Pepper uses in his predictions. <laughs> 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 this dead cat Skippy said, I'm sorry, did Hicks just call them the Arabonas <laughs> Cardinals? <laughs> uh, and let me just point this out. 
Uh, this is Chris in Charlotte, who's been with his team since the beginning, and now Stanley's picking him against him. What's up, Chris? Hey, Ronnie, thanks for taking my call. On behalf of all the Panthers fans, we'd like to thank Becker Lips for uh, picking the Seahawks, man. Go Panthers, baby! Bro, you're, you're guys Chris, done this weekend. Would you guys welcome back uh, the greatest wrestler of all the time, and would you put the Nature Boy back on the field after he's already stabbed you in the back several times? <laughs> Nature Boy is welcome in Charlotte anytime. He's That's the great. Best. If he, he would be there supporting and doing the woo for the Panthers, unless somebody on the other side offered him twenty five bucks and a Wawa shorty, <laughs> and then he'll fucking switch sides for that. I don't know what that Panthers fan's so happy about. The Seahawks are going to fucking run that game. Seahawks plus two and a half. Take it. Make money. Do yourself a favor. I'll tell you this about your Seattle Seahawks. They look pretty shitty in that cold weather game. I understand that it was cold. I know. But man the fuck up, dude. It was very chilly. Guess what? Your quarterback didn't run the ball, and that's what he's supposed to do. And then one time he like, ran like once, and it, it was it was fine. It was like, great. Yeah. But he learned from their they learned from their mistakes, and well, it's warm not. in Carolina. How about you? Do you ever learn from yours? <laughs> he does uh, All the time. Carolina, warm. Seahawks, Russell Wilson, touchdowns. It's going to be great. Plus two and a half. Seahawks. Jimbo and PA. Yeah, the Chiefs have been rolling. They got 11 in a row. Pepper, about three years ago when they hired Andy Reid, he guaranteed a Super Bowl within five years. He's well, first of all, I remember that. The blackout kick doesn't remember a thing. <laughs> <laughs> look, Andy Reid's doing a great job with that Kansas City offense. Look, and their defense is ridiculous. Say look again. Look. <laughs> Take the Chiefs. I'm telling you. Please, listen to me. Plus five. It's easy money. It's literally like, I'm going to take out some money and make a bet, get more money back. That's how it works. I like you better when you're drinking and making your fucking picks. You seem cooler when you're sober and making your picks. You seem like a num yum 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 baby. Mm. No. Mm, thank you, Ew. Chiefs. Mm, thank you, those points. Mm. Ew. Mm. It's so vile. I just can't. Oh, my, it's vile. my stomach's rumbling. Know why? You know what? Go to HR. I, no. I should. No, don't. Dude, don't. Swing. I have a lot. When you had, to talk to them about. when you did the show with Dave, yeah, both of you were screaming because you had no more listeners. But don't scream for no reason. On that, you have a microphone. Micro doesn't mean it makes your voice smaller. Okay. And so you have to scream to be heard. All right. Just chill. All right. Yeah. Picks up every little micro sound. Uh, Jeremy, Texas. Hey, guys. Hey, Chris. Yes. Thanks for uh, jinxing the Packers, you fucking idiot. <laughs> By the way, Devontae Adams. Yeah. Great player. He's not even playing. He's hurt. That's fine. Randall hey, Cobb. Say that's actually, the reason no, why he's going to win. Randall, he still has you Randall Cobb and James Jones. Oh, exactly. Hey, 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 Chris, I'll make a bet with you. Uh, Packers are playing the Chiefs tomorrow night in Super Bowl One on NFL Network. Uh, I'll give you the Chiefs and 15 points. I'll take it. Look, yeah, I, I, get, I, get you little, I get your little joke, bro. Uh-huh. Exactly. Listen, you don't have nothing to worry about. Packers are going to roll. You're going to have nothing. That's, again, I... I maybe had nothing to worry about, but now uh, with your predictive history, yeah. we're screwed. Look, Bruce Arians doesn't know what the hell he's doing. There's no such thing as a, j a jinx. Thank you. And yet the numbers show that Chris is one. <laughs> That's what I did. At some point, it becomes science instead of jinx. This isn't superstition anymore. I've got the data to prove that this is real. Now that you're saying this, it has me questioning other things. Are specters real? <laughs> Ghouls. No. Jinxes aren't real. I fucking looked at the data. I know what I'm Here's doing. Here's the data that you need to look at. Yeah. The fucking mirror and see what a <laughs> loser that you are. No, I got See if it. you see an L appear on your forehead. <laughs> nope. I'm you see got him. a new nickname, my friend, the Ghouls. Pretty cool name. By the way, um, less de more depressing than Chris's fucking picks... For football, uh, are the Oscar nominations? You talk about something I don't <gasps> care about. Oh my god! It's a shit show. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care to watch this. The movies that I haven't seen, people have told me not to go see. Yeah, there's and there's quite a few of those in yes. there. There's quite a few. And now, Alan, 
Alan Reichman is dead. Mm. Is that? Did he ever do anything better than Die Hard? Alan Reichman. Um, I know some people see. like the Robin Hood thing. Or he yeah, was Harry good Potter. in that. He, he played Alan Reichman in all those. What about Galaxy Quest? Yeah, he was great. Galaxy he was Quest. really good in Galaxy but Quest. Die Hard, great. Mm. No one's better than Hans Gruber. He could have died during fucking Die Hard. I mean, he didn't even have to be there for the last scenes. And still had just as an impressive career. <laughs> <laughs> because everyone has ripped off Hans Gruber since then, correct? Yeah, he's, he's, he was the prototypical European bad guy. They should just nominate him for anything and just throw him in there for the Oscars. Because these fucking nominations suck works. dick. No, Danish part of that goddamn 69 club. I hate it. Let me think of... Uh, well, what about him in Dogma? Have you guys oh, yeah. ever seen Bottle Shock? I love him in that. No, I haven't. You'll, I think you'll like this movie. It didn't do well. But first of all, it's about the wine country in California in the 70s. And all you really have to look at is the wine country. It's so beautiful. Yeah. But this gimmick is he uh, comes over and he wants to do the first blind taste test. And this is based on a true story. California wines against French wines. And all the people in France were like laughing. <laughs> They're like, yeah, uh, let's do it. I'm not going to say how it fucking ends, but USA, 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 USA. Uh, what else did he do? Love Actually had that small oh, part yeah. in. All right, here's Josh in Kentucky. Uh, let's see how he feels about Chris Stanley. Well, you see. Son of a bitch. What? You know what you did to my team? You fucker. What'd I do? Just take it, Chris. You deserve it. Mm. Did you see what had to happen for that team to lose that game because of you? I, it wasn't me, dude. Come on. Why are you so angry? It was it, you. It was goddamn Joey it. Porter. Own it. Knock out Geo. Joey Porter on the field. Yeah. The ref's uh, looking the other way while his ass is out there running his gums. All right, Gail, something could be... be yeah, I, I'm pissed about the Joey Porter, too, sir. As a matter of fact, I'm asking for him to be thrown from football, even though I haven't even heard anyone mad at him in the league. All right, you know Chris's nom-nom thing that he does, right? Yes, he Love did. It. For points. Mm -hmm. No, this gives you reason to go to hr liz sets fire says that chris calls her house and pretends that he's going down on his imaginary girlfriend using that sound that's mm -mm. disgusting this is my points eating sound because i like points let's see, let's see. No! no you know what i think that's you and your imaginary boyfriend joey jojo <laughs> oh, yum, 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 yum. so you wouldn't be doing it I would, you would be, be fucking be, getting. Yeah, You're I'd be receiving. giving it to you. What are you, you doing? Leaning over and sucking his ass? <laughs> you God. You're trying to 69 Club. He's 64 because <laughs> he can't make it. <laughs> He's just putting his mouth on your belly. Yeah, give it to me. <laughs> Lick that uh, belly button. But yeah, that's inappropriate. That's just my, my sound for when I get points when I'm gambling. Um, Disgusting. <laughs> By the way, NBC has put out, I guess they had somebody speaking at whatever these things are, where they get everybody together for the, the <laughs> press, and they said that Jimmy Fallon is not a drunk. He's just a guy who goes out and has a good time and falls down and hurts himself. Okay. That's troubling. <laughs> they you? address it. Here's the, um, here's the weird thing. Once it comes up about anyone, now you're fucking stuck with it. He's a drunk. You know? You know? <laughs> Th this is what happened with Johnny Football. If someone says, Oh, I think he has a problem. From then on, you don't laugh. <laughs> it's like, oh, Whenever wow. Whenever you say I'm getting fucked up, <laughs> it looks like someone's slowly dying in front of you. Stop it, Johnny. Stop it, Jimmy. We're hearing all these terrible things about you. It's really yeah, Chris, weird. That, what about all the shit we've heard about you? No, so that, that's, much. it's fine. Look around this room yes, guys. and see if one of us will say that you're not an alcoholic. Just ask and, one and by this one. This is a fucking shoot. You get to ask. Any of us, okay. if you're an alcoholic, and that person will then speak for all of us. Okay. Ron, am I not an alcoholic? You're absolutely 100% an alcoholic. You are a fucking poster for alcoholism. Gail, am I 
an alcoholic. This is how dumb he is. All you had to do was ask one of them. Oh, ask oh, one. So the whole oh. fucking point would be to go to the person who would most likely be on your side. Like a bad better, <laughs> you want the person who you know. Who already made the statement. And I've actually yeah. said to you, you're not calling. And people write to me, well, particularly when he got so fucked up at the thing. Sure. Hey, I'm worried about Chris. Can't we do something? Can you do something about him? I go, yes, I can assist him when he wants it. Yes. I can't take someone who doesn't want to quit and have them quit. Yeah, I, I, I was confused by the game because I thought I had to ask everyone in the room. Gail just smashed her knee so on what we call the Don pole. Don put this. What is the point of this? Here's the thing. Don put this room together visually. But every time we turn on the speakers, it blows. And if you tried, to, uh, and the mics have sucked forever. Yep. And if you tried to wheel up to this table, you're going to hit something underneath. It's post. Oh, this is. Just, it's a fucking yeah, goal post underneath it. So now, that, 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 that's a post. Gail, come over here <laughs> and look underneath if I attempt. Oh, my God. There's these very sharp things. I've never noticed that no, before. There's no That's reason. That's worse. You have a worse situation. I know. Jesus. I come in here and slowly try to wrap myself <laughs> around the post oh, no. by leaving my other leg away from the sharp, pointed. <laughs> fu- I think it's a knife under there. <laughs> Oh my god, I just hit my knee so hard that it, you know, when you just get that like electricity that goes yeah. through your whole body? Yeah. I feel Chris, like my tongue is yeah. numb. Now. Chris calls that tripping. <laughs> so when he can't get any ass, he tries to slam his elbow down <laughs> on a table. Why is it working? Also, this console's very loose, I've, I've noticed. <laughs> yeah, especially when you're there. It's going to come down one day because I see you try to lean on it or push it. Yeah. And it's. It's a card table, is what it is, but with jagged things and posts underneath to hurt us. <laughs> and then we're like, uh, anytime that we play music, I'm always like, what's wrong with this song? And he goes, oh, it only sounds bad through our speakers. I go, do you realize that the way that people in radio decide whether a song is fucking mixed correctly is through the speakers and headphones? Yeah. Yeah, we don't have that. And they swear to us, well, it sounds better at home. It shouldn't. It this should would be like everywhere. target practice in the dark. You just shoot, and someone says, "I'm pretty sure you hit it." <laughs> that was the deer shaped one. Here's a gentleman we haven't talked to in a long time, Snowy. Ronnie, how you doing today, sir? Cool in the motherfucking gang. Fucking a. Yeah. Fucking uh, a. Put out a Rickman movie. I really liked him in the movie Dogma. The Kevin Smith movie. Yeah, we all said time. that he was great in Dogma. He was good Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't catch it. Sorry. No, you know what, Snowy? It should be said again, because I think Chris was yelling out, lock it up. It's a great bet. Yeah. And he was making that horrible sound. Yeah. Yeah. He's drunk again. What do you expect? Packers, yeah. Packers plus seven. <laughs> <laughs> it's really God. disgusting. It's gonna make- okay, I'm going to have to take my headphones off, because it's like you're doing it right in my ear. We're losing non-perverted fucking listeners by the second. <laughs> we already have so few. <laughs> I'll tell you this. That fucking Joe wrote a thing today that I thought maybe he was a KT. Yeah. He wrote something about a little kid. <laughs> that I had to call him names because I didn't know whether this go. I had to really make sure that I was politically correct. Only because I don't know whether Kashmir gets the reply messages. <laughs> but I hope, I hope he gets how pussy sounds. Unbelievable. I, there's two things up on the iBank today. The Adele uh, carpool karaoke, which is fantastic. That James Gordon milks the shit out of this bit. Yeah. And guess what? It fucking keeps working for him. It's, yeah. it's going well. And he's getting giant stars like Adele. Before that was you know uh, why? Bieber. Because he can sing. Yeah. He fucking hit a note and Adele looked at him like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not even kidding. Early on, she looks at him and like, really? But then she... Uh, did you watch this at all, Gail? No, I didn't see it yet. Go to Spice Girls. Cause, all right, Gail, you do your impression first. Which impression? Of the- you don't do an impression of Adele. Oh, I thought you were saying of the Spice Girls. And no. I was like, let me think about this. Sporty. Um, Adele was, thank you, thank you, all of you. Thank you so much. It's so nice. Thank you. She basically was acting like that through this whole thing. She's just adorable. <laughs> um. I play a little bit. 
I'm just I'm finding uh, the uh, you're doing a bad job. Spice Girls right. part. I'm not doing the best part. Whatever happened with me wanting to move Vito into the uh, Eric Stengel spot? You can move there because you can't run a computer. <laughs> but what I would like is that Vito takes ten weeks. Shadows Eric Stengel. Wow, that could be good. In 10 weeks, it'll be like boot camp. Stengel will teach him to use the computer properly and put him through full workouts. Computer class. Wait, I'm even trying to talk for this asshole and it's still going to be. Yeah. Don't know where the Spice Girls part is. Oh, my <sighs> God. Oh, my God. What's up, Logan? Hey, boys. Hey, uh, Gail. I hope your knee's okay. Thanks. How about her nephews? Uh, it's not, though. Uh, I wanted to say, um, first of all, Bottle Shock is a great movie. That, that's a really, really cool movie. If you like wine it's not a great scene. movie, but it's one of. There's a scene in this movie that this person is like living in uh, the wine country, and it's a house with no windows and no doors. Yeah, you'd still live there in a heartbeat. It's so fucking yeah. beautiful. But also, what I wanted to say, a uh, crazy thing about Alan Rickman or Reitman, however you want to say it, is his very first movie was fucking Die Hard. Yeah, everybody like, knows that. It comes up every time that... But that was his first movie. Yeah, that's... Crazy. And, I mean, basically, he went toe-to-toe with a movie star in that movie, and I think even Bruce Willis would admit that he was more charismatic. Yeah. Like, the reason... One of the reasons I think Bruce Willis became a big movie star is because he found some impossible way to... To defeat Hans Gruber, and then <laughs> he after must that, be good. yeah, you're watching, <laughs> you're watching Bruce Willis and anything, and people are like, I don't know, and you're like, dude, trust me, I've seen that guy fucking take out Hans Gruber. We're going to be okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, this is Adele singing. <laughs> Into she said she was 10 when they were out. That's so cute. Thank you. Thank you. She also raps a little later on. She's adorable. People love her, and why not? You know. And James Corden is is he's charming and well, he likeable. can sing. He can, you know, he's uh, chubby enough where he's harmless. Yeah, you know? the right kind of chubby. He's the right kind of chubby. James Corden, man of the future. Although I don't know whether you saw this or not, Seth Meyers just. Signed a contract that's like to 2021, which Holy sounds shit. like Whoa. that's the future. I know. <laughs> now, here's the deal that's a pretty serious contract. It's five years, and it yet seems it seems like, like it's a, Yeah, <laughs> it does seem like because I, I still think it's weird when we start with 20. People are like, What? <laughs> Once we get to 2021, yeah. it will be the fucking future. Like, if someone says 2003, that still sounds like the future to me. <laughs> Now, I'm going to tell you something. Every other uh, host has demanded, I'll go so far to say, fight to get to be the Tonight Show host. Two have failed. One, Jimmy Fallon has succeeded beyond anyone's expectations and dreams. Seth Meyers will never get to be the Tonight Show host. Jimmy's far too young. Yeah. Jimmy's 61 <laughs> in 2038, right? Mm. That's how fucking young the man is. Jesus. Now, here's my belief. There's two reasons why they want to have a long-term contract. Because fucking Netflix, Yahoo, fucking Amazon, whatever yeah. these things are, will just pay big money whether it works or not to steal something from the networks. Two. 
Seth Meyers has been offered another job. This is not being said. I don't have any inf- inside information, but I know it to be true. Seth Meyers has been told he will take over for Lauren Michaels for Saturday Night Live. Oh, what? Shit. What is the date? Say it now and write it down. Put it in a mayonnaise jar. Right. Lower that into cement and put it in the middle of Times Square. January 14th, 2016. You just heard what he said. You heard that I was the first person ever to say it. Wow. Dave told Seth that he will get Lauren Michaels job. Number one, how many other people can do it? It's got to be a very short list. Seth was a very successful writer, performer, weekend update guy. He's got the right temperament. You know what I mean? He he doesn't fucking scream at people. He's got a good eye for talent. Likes to move the ball around. Likes it when other people get a laugh. They're signing him. So when our own Lorne Michaels joins the 69 club Mm. that exists... Seth Myers gets that job. Holy shit. Oh. Say the date again. January 14th, 2016. I'll just point this out. Am I wearing a watch or any rings? No, you are not. No. So that proves that this is 2016. No smart watch, no smart rings. What? Yeah. Matter of fact, I don't even own a VR goggle or helmet right now. What? You don't have yeah. an Oculus Rift? It's the 16s, dude. It doesn't work. I like to call this 2016, you know? <laughs> That's pretty sick. Yeah, it is. I like it. So Sweet 16 didn't catch on? or How about Sweet 16? Okay. Sweet 16, I like that. <laughs> She's a real Sweet 16. But gee, he kicks like a mule. He's a, how old is Lauren Michaels right now? 71. Shit. He could still never be in the 69 Club. Unless you know I read time the, the thing of these 69 people and see that my parents are so much older. I know. Doing well. <laughs> Forever. That's good genes. I don't know. I don't know if they're my real parents. <laughs> really? Don't seem very much like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I guess the only thing that I'm really like my parents is that we both watch Fox News 24 hours a day. <laughs> I, I don't know why this story is up. Vito put it up. The something about Sunny from <laughs> the Diva. The, Look, the WWE you, Diva Sunny. The, Vito uh, puts in five ideas a day, uh-huh. right? Every day for the show. Three of them are always WWE related. <laughs> And I'll go to him and go, why would we talk about Sonny? Because it's a big deal. Uh, what's the story on Sonny? So Sonny is selling off her WWE Hall of Fame ring on eBay, and she's going to start the bidding at about $3,000. You think it would get that? I think it could get more. Wrestling fans are and that's crazy. That's Sonny? I don't even recognize wow. her. Wow. Yeah, she's hit some rough times. No, she oh, hasn't. She looks lovely. No, but she's literally been known to hit rough times. Oh. Yeah. Or like a few years ago, she was uh, post- posing in bed in a bed with fans. Nude? Uh, no, she was wearing a robe. But just but in nude a under bed. it? We're all nude yeah, under I think she robes. Was, I think she had uh, titties out it's under the robe. Weird. Titties out. <laughs> they're, not, they're not out. She's clothed. Under the robe, they were out. We're all naked right point. now by your by your standards. Gail, stop it. Chris won't be able to think of anything else. I just I'm freaking yum, out. Yum 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 yum. <laughs> no! Sunny, give me that okay, ring. Give me some. HR. HR Puffin don't, stop. Don't, don't fire this dick and <laughs> it'll get rough. Puff. HR Puffin stop. Come on, no, no, come fire on. that come asshole. On. He's a drug. <laughs> I'm just making a sound, that's all. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's my least favorite sound hey janice wants to talk to us she's from chicago hey janice hi janice hey, hello my friend uh, <laughs> that sound. Yeah. what janice it's horrible disgusting. right janice this one janice <laughs> oh, you know chris when, chris actually does that and he's been known to dry out women in two different countries <laughs> <laughs> this is about Sorry. football not sexual <laughs> dry is a bone bone dry Bone digger, bone digger. 
Um, you know, I wanted to share with you that um, Joe List on Conan. He was great. That same show, he played all the clips of Bowie that was ever on. Yeah. Wasn't it wonderful? Yeah, it was, but it was also yeah. sad oh, for me. I know. But he was so charming and <laughs> when he's doing the kids' poems. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> rock God. Rock God. David Bowie, Rock, rock. God. Yes. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's so funny. I, I'm so last century, but someone called me to say that someone posted a real great picture of Mike on uh, Facebook. Yeah. Talking about how much they missed him and shit. Uh, <laughs> I know. I'm His like, you miss so You'd be like, you fucking miss him. I was married to him. <laughs> <laughs> But it made his folks feel very good. That's and, nice. And me, t- and me too. <laughs> well, you send me a picture. I'll post it. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. In fact, I I don't know. I'm very last century. I All right, here's what I'm going to do, Chris. Yes. You get a hold of her. Find out where the Facebook is, okay. and then we'll copy it. Uh, we'll put it out there as our all-time favorite listener. Got it. <laughs> Because you claim that he was. He was. Okay. (laughs) Then I'm going to use that as enough. And now I don't even think Janice likes us. It's just that when she listens to us, she thinks about Mike. (laughs) And then she... What do you... You smoke? You said you smoke his cigars and you wear his jacket? I wear his uh, vest, yeah. Uh, His biker vest? Yeah. You know, Stanley's like, hey, I should get a biker vest. I go, why don't you get a bike first, Dick? I don't think there's anything worse. It's terrible. But no, no, you're all, no I mean, uh, the biker vest thing. Yeah. Yeah, I just want a biker vest. What's wrong with that? I like Everything vests. Is, you you know, know I do. I know, but you walking around, and then, you know, you have that. He puts on it. Here's what he put uh, on, on the back of his thing, too. The bloody Caucasians, the story of Queens. Oh, come on. That's you know crap. what? When people do shit like that, I'm like, I hope a motorcycle gang sees you yeah. and decides to whip your ass for it. That doesn't happen. I mean, this is style, buddy. But nothing's worse than that. Pretending. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. He's cool. Thank you, Janice. I appreciate that. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, remember when Justin Stangle put on the uh, the motorcycle jacket? Oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe you guys could be in a gang. Well, here's what he said to me. He goes, "I go, why do you have a motorcycle jacket?" He goes, "My uh, dad would never let me have a motorcycle because he was a doctor and saw how many people lost their feet uh, from riding around on motorcycles." Yeah. He goes, "Now he's gone. I get this jacket. I go, do you get a bike?" He's like, "No." <laughs> The jacket. I understand that. I, I think your dad would let you have the jacket. <laughs> no, not in my house. <laughs> your foot will fall off because of that jacket. I do crack up when I see like kids now. They got they're riding bicycles. They got helmets and gear. And oh my god, I don't think I would ever ride my bike if I had to ride all that wear all that shit. Well, I don't know how they ride around like wearing leather or whatever in the summer. You know, I just like you know what? I'm not going to get a bike. That's too fucking much. <laughs> And I'll tell you this, and, uh, not that my neighborhood was o- overly tough, but the kids were judgmental. And I feel like if I would have been having a helmet on while I rode the bike, it would have been the most dangerous thing I could have done. Because kids would have come by the and water. hit me with his fucking sticks until I fell off my bike and then ran over me. And then I'd be pushing my bike up. <laughs> It's always, it's always the funniest thing when you would see a kid pushing his bike and crying. <laughs> I can't ride it, but I know I'm in trouble if I leave it. I'm <laughs> only pushing it. <laughs> and you'd always be like, what happened? They ran over a manhole cover. It would always, never be exciting. But they would hit some manhole cover that was up too far. Because I remember, like, even riding along with kids, and then you just see them go fucking just ass overhead. Because the manhole was up about four inches. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just pushing it because I'm, I'm hurt, but I can't leave my bike behind. No. My pants will start hitting me. <laughs> it would come up, fucking hand, arms hanging up. Where's your bike? Where's your bike at? The 
the kids took it. Oh, yeah, that was always the thing. The fucking teenagers. It was always terrifying. That's why I don't like any of those fucking zombie movies, because I just think of them as teenagers chasing children. <laughs> it's the same shit. <laughs> this is terrifying. All right, honey, I'll I talk did, to you I later. Always, I always crack up, too, when I see guys riding motorcycles with big helmets. But yeah. shorts and flip flops. Oh what yeah, the fuck? protect yeah, out of all things, protect your, your toes. Pain. Please, yeah. I mean, the, really, I have to do say this: anyone who's ever laid a bike down gets that road rash. Yeah, and you, was, it's the worst. It's fucked up thing to ever hear about. You, they have to go in like with a wire brush uh, just to uh, take the the fucking little cinders and pebbles out. Oh fuck! Uh, I know Mike. Mike lost one of half of one of his tattoos once. Oh uh, like uh, yeah. That's disgusting. I love you guys. All right, I love you too, honey. Talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. All right, um, we got Christina stopping in, right? Yes, we do. Just a little bit. Why don't we do a, a scope with Christina here? Oh, yeah. Fun. Scope it up. You love to scope, Chris. I love scoping. Well, what's your scope going to be? For Bennington in NYC. Uh, just enough with the Bennington oh, for five oh, fucking okay, seconds. Okay, right. What's up there? Somebody's <laughs> road rash yes, back? Yes, this is why, look, Vito. I want you, instead of, I see you sitting around in the back, and I'm going to say this. I'm not using you enough. I want you to get you in the uh, Eric Stengel spot, and, you know, and don't worry. I will always fucking protect you from Olivia Munn. You never have to worry about that. But I want you to start, I know you're not going to do it today, but start leaning towards being able to put stuff up on the computer for us. I'm going to kill it, and then we're going to call it the veto spot. But here's the deal. I don't want to look up and see fucking great WWE matches from the past. <laughs> no WWE matches. You just turn around, he's giving me the thumbs up. Only, N only NWA stuff. <laughs> I didn't even think you went back that far, dude. I love all wrestling. AWA? AWA. Georgia Championship? GCW. Florida Championship? Yeah. Some, you know who the great Gordon uh, Sully was? Wrestling. You know who Gordon Sully was? Yeah. No, you don't. No, lying. I don't. I lied. He was the voice of Florida wrestling. I want you to go look him up. He also did a lot of NWA stuff, so now I know you're not into it. I do like the NWA. You look at probably at small clips. I have the NWA DVD at home. DVD? What is it? We're in 2016, man. We, we, want, we care about the cloud. See how quick he's on it. <laughs> this is how quick that fucker. You know what? I didn't do nano impresses. Which, uh, yeah, I think you found, right? I did, yeah. So this guy does these little, almost like one second impressions of actors doing... It's amazing. Yeah, and and they're really eerie. And the voices are great, but some of them, even his expressions. So you have to go to the iBank to check them out, because the, the video of him kind of capturing the uh, face What's of his of name? His name is Ross Marquand, I think it is. All right, now, how come we don't know this dude if he's that fucking talented? I don't know. All right, Chris, and I think they only put up the thing, so we'll have to announce what he's doing with each, right? I don't think he says it, right? No, he doesn't say it, so right. Chris, say the name. No, don't ask Chris, too. Okay. Let's All right. Very nice. Very nice indeed. All right, this is Nano Impressions. This is jo Justin Timberlake thinks a wave is for him. <laughs> Oh, is it, oh, I thought you were... Al Pacino misses a straw with his mouth. Hey, where are you? Come on. <laughs> George Clooney tries to get a word in. You know, creatively, I... Um, okay, <laughs> well... Antonio Banderas forgets his password. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kevin Spacey walks into the wrong table read. What's going on here? <laughs> Table read for Cool Runnings 2? Wow. <laughs> J Jason Strahan gets a Charlie horse. Damn it. Oh, God. Harrison Ford loses a sneeze. And, uh... Sorry. I... I... Hold on. Michael Caine tries to open a jar for someone. I can't... I'm trying. <laughs> James Gandolfini tries to get a hair out of his mouth. What is? <laughs> Christian Bale tries to decline a call and accidentally answers. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh. No, I didn't mean to. Matthew McConaughey applies the five-second rule. Ooh. 
No, you're probably all right. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Neeson deals with an automatic voice system. Representative. <laughs> Operator. Representative. Aaron Paul recognizes the smell. Dude. <laughs> Brad Pitt forgets what he's about to say. Yeah, just thing, like, like... Marlon Brando describes gravity. You have this, this force that's mm, everywhere. <laughs> John C. Riley uses a word he's 70% sure what it means. I don't mean to be hyperbolic or nothing, but I mean, I feel like... <laughs> Christopher Walken realized he's on the jumbotron. <laughs> wow. Magic. The John C. Riley is amazing. The John C. Riley is maybe his best one, but I love that his Kevin Spacey literally could have been a one word impression with just the way he said wow was so dead on. Yeah. Those are two of my favorites. I like Gandolfini trying to get hair out of his mouth. <laughs> yeah. What is this? <laughs> so good. That's one where his face really becomes. Yeah. This guy's amazing. It's incredible. And it's so much better than if you sat and tried to do, you know, imagine all these guys smoking pot <laughs> or like this. I'm going to try to imagine that. <laughs> all right, let's break. We'll come back. Christina's going to be with us. Mm -hmm. We're going to scope. Life is going to be good. Also, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, T.J. Miller hosting the Critics' Choice Award this Sunday. Highly recommend without even seeing. Uh, the Razzie nominations have been out. Yep. And I'm going to talk sexual politics with the show. Oh, you won't want to miss this. Bennington. Mr. David Bowie. Uh, I guess of the 80s that was, right? Yeah. David Bowie in the 80s, which was a strange decade from him. Some brilliant stuff and some odd stuff. Yeah, it was like some of it was weird, but I also have fond memories of those songs playing yeah. too. I mean, it's it's not maybe my favorite era of his. Right. But for the the type of music that he was doing, he was doing great. Now, uh yesterday about this time, we had a guest in that exploded for us. People went crazy for. And that was Noel Fielding yeah. all over all last night I was hearing Oh my God, that was amazing. I can't believe you guys know. I didn't know that he had that many American fans. I believe the thing, same thing is going to happen today with Christina. How are you? Hi, how are you? First of all, I, I'm wondering, have you been back on our show since the big Fez meltdown? No, I have not. That was a... Not since then? That yeah. was quite a day. Quite yeah. a day. Now, you guys had it, had it out. We did. We Fez took we it out and then put head. it back in. <laughs> but yeah, you know what? You actually you weren't mean to him, but you no. also did not recoil and take shit. Yeah, no, of course not. Why would I? You know, he was in the wrong in that instance. But do you realize that you caused his fatal heart attack? You lie. I did That's not. That's what he's. I his, did his not. Doctors you said. know, after that appearance with me and Fez, he wound up apologizing. I apologized too. Right. And then we became good buddies in the hallway until he left for good. You know what? When I grew up, it seems like you had to have a fist fight with another kid before mm. you guys became friends. I think your closest friend you you have to have had a little history with like that. Let's yeah. all beat up Joe. Let's Let's do do it. We're going to get really shit. close. No, don't do Joe. it. <laughs> Really? Oh, that guy? I could take that guy. Well, that's why it's fun for all of us to fight. Him. It's even more fun when we all dogpile somebody. Uh, all right, so you guys are hanging out today. Today's the... Uh, and by the way, you do stuff for Raw Dog, which... I do now. It's a we, brand new thing. We weren't told about. What exactly do you do? I'm voice tracking some comedy. Uh, some I'm, I'm kind of introing some comedy on the channel, and it's every Tuesday from... Uh, I'm three times in the 8 a.m. hour, three times in the 11 a.m. hour, and three times in the 6 p.m. hour. Spin in my favorite hits, you know? So what are some of the things that you would be saying during your voice? Little anecdotes and stuff, things yeah. that happen to me in life i promote you guys i've promoted you know my my periscope buddy scope chris stanley king chris scope stanley bro. is indeed yeah. a scope bro yes. king, he's yes. king scope bro yeah so i'm like you know little anecdotes things that happen during throughout the day 
Mm-hmm. All kinds of stuff, and then and obviously promoting the comics and where they're. Are you getting be. feedback on it? Are people still liking getting, it? Yeah, I'm getting good, good feedback nice. on Twitter. It's All right, nice. so Tuesday mm-hmm. is your day. Tuesdays, isn't that funny? I'm the only girl that does it, and they put me on Tuesdays because I'm a big see you next Tuesday. Oh, yeah. is, that your, is that what you say? Every I time? came up with that. Well, no, I just yeah. came. I actually just came up with it when I was doing the show. I was like, I'm here with you every Tuesday, and I was like, Wait a second. Yeah, now I get it. I'm gonna see you next Tuesday. Yeah. This yeah. makes total sense. So yeah. Well, I love it. Thank uh, you. Well, it's so great to have you in here, and it's so great to so happy to be see you when you're not smoking weed. Uh, normally, <laughs> you're very, very high. Could you do you're something? Versatile. Yeah, you do I some am. stuff for our weed smoking channels as well, right? I do. Well, yeah. you know, I used to do Reefer Radio here, which is a right. pop up channel we did with High Times Radio. So, I mean, anybody's up for the job. It's me. Who uh, did we have that time? High Times went crazy uh, walked through the lobby. It was uh, Doug Doug Benson. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So I was Save. leaving with Doug Benson. And then everybody was like, Doug! Yep. And they just ran at him <laughs> and were just handing out edibles and mm-hmm. everything. And I was like, well, give me some from my producer. And I forgot what I got. It was Jelly Belly. Gum- like gummies. Yeah. It was like gummies. Yum. Love gummies. Yeah, and you loved them all? <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, mm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> disgusting. Uh. But uh, Doug was, it was like if I would have walked past the sports channel with Mickey Mantle. I mean, they just went batshit yes. when they saw him. He is him. a god in the weed smoking community. Well, you know, sure. I did a, a show with him in front of a big audience that wasn't his... Get Doug with High. Mm. I did his Doug Loves Movies. <laughs> Doug Loves Movies. And it still um. felt like I was uh, Get Doug with High. Yeah, that it, element. Th- it was all throughout. the same premise. <laughs> all right, I wanted to ask you guys uh, some questions today. Well, let me just um, let me just tell you where I'm coming from before I start this. There was a movie I saw. I'm not going to give it away. All right? Okay. Um, and I saw the movie... I enjoyed the movie, even though it's outside of my wheelhouse. But there was a scene in the movie that later I went and read the IMDb page, and there were huge threads and people fighting. And it was about basically sexual politics. Now, here's what happened. Hmm. There was a girl in the movie who would have been probably 35 to 38. What are you doing, Chris? I'm scared periscoping. Well, why wouldn't you at least let us know? Yeah. Oh. There would be an introduction to it. Hi. You have a a zero uh, show business (laughs) thing about yourself. But look at his stance. He looks like Peter Pan. He did did change his stance once. You know what he needed to be more? Puffed his chest. You know what he is? He's Peter Pants. That's (laughs) who he is. All right. So that's annoying. Um, But let me just jump into this. So. The premise was this girl, even though she was well into being adult, she was somewhat naive um, and had, hadn't had sex for a while. Okay. Has sex with this guy in his hotel room. That's one of those things that they both probably shouldn't have done, but they were two adults having sex. Mm-hmm. I go back and I read later on the IMDb page that people thought of it as a rape. Ooh. Because they felt that she was sexually naive and they were calling her kind of a woman child. And now I'm from a different generation where we worry about, you know, from the victimhood. But if someone is old enough to drink or go into the army. Was it clear they were consenting adults? They were definitely consenting adults. Now, I would say this. She probably was seduced more into thinking this was probably more lasting than it turned out to be right okay but she also wasn't special needs and she wasn't um uh underage and yet the internet exploded on this people have so much time on their hands i think that that would have been the only case that i would have been able to say okay now now we can discuss the possibility of that is if you could say this person was special needs. She was not right. able to mm-hmm. make a decision. Right. But we come up with these rules for a reason, right? We pick 18. Right. And we've decided that that's the that's age. That's the age. And because you have to have a number, it has to start somewhere. It has to start somewhere. Mm-hmm. And. But here's the deal. I think it's still weirdly misog- uh, misogynistic to say this mm-hmm. because I feel like they still don't want women to own their own sexuality. We right. still see it as some um, 1950s. You have a gift that you need to hold on for that. Right. Of course. Person. And if you don't hold on to that gift, yeah. then you're a raging slut. Right. Yeah, you're right. So the, the, just the idea of them implying that it would not 
that it would have been rape would be to say she doesn't know she didn't know that she was giving away her precious right. flower <laughs> and she, she had no idea that, she was tricked that precious flower uh, in your pants that you must get a, because it's a obviously, science experiment not a flower <laughs> obviously women don't receive any uh enjoyment from this it has to all be uh, you know just right. the man's jo- enjoyment and the woman's sacrifice but i'm fucking baffled that here we are almost in the 20s and people still we're still putting boxes in ourselves when we don't need to yeah but the interesting about it thing about it to me is everybody's really vocal on the internet but i don't see them being very vocal in real life i mean this is i don't, I don't think that people would be as outraged at a dinner conversation as they would be in front of their own screens. that's interesting yeah you know that's absolutely true and then there's like there's good things that come with that and bad. It gives you a voice in right. a place that you don't have it, but it also can create a fire that probably would not have started otherwise. And in this world today, for some reason, everybody needs that instant reaction. And for some reason, they want that reaction to be negative. There's so much negativity on the Internet. So people just pick stuff to fight about, even if it's not something they truly believe. I know that they're just going at it just for the sake of a reaction. And I'm looking at you guys on Chris's scope. Mm -hmm. It looks like I'm really interviewing this cool band. (laughs) From the 90s grunge. (laughs) Is it difficult to be in an all-girl group? You know what? We're rockers, not girl rockers. the alt world, you know, yeah. it's kind of tough. But, we usually uh, write our songs together. <laughs> yeah. Um, Who is the come- definitive, by the way, for both of you, the definitive female rocker oh, all time? Man. Patty Smith. Patty Smith, number one. I mean, I love Janis Joplin. I just, I do love her. All right, I grew I'm gonna, up with her. So because you took the, you guys grew, you were, you grew up in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I grew up listening to her record period. because my parents, you know, did they were you hippies, see the whatever. documentary, the Janis documentary? I haven't. Out? No. Is it something that I need to yes. see? Yes. First okay. of all, you do need to see it because it's just her singing. Yeah. But now also, she looks so young to me. Mm. I remember before thinking, oh, there's this wonderful woman. And, you know, my whole life was just like, oh, I wish I met that woman. But now I look at her and she's a, a 27-year-old girl yeah. to me. But she's so badass. Yes. So amazing. Yes. So who was your pick going to base? I was going to say Chrissy Hine, the very okay, lovely cool. Chrissy Hine. But that's only because I forgot your two. <laughs> um, because both uh, any one of those things makes it. What about for you, Chris? Kim Deal. Ooh. A big Kim Deal fan. <laughs> Look Deal. at that smile. Why, why would you curtsy when you said Kim Deal? <laughs> <laughs> Moving down to the mic. He's, he's, getting, he's deal. getting a little red in the face. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that's he comes from a show where you get red in the face. <laughs> and, yet, and yet you judge others yes. for getting yeah. red in yeah, the I face. Do. Did you hear back from Dave after you brought up his blotchiness? No, he didn't, I heard nothing from him. You brought up somebody's blotchiness? He yeah. Inside Dave uh, did uh, oh, Anthony Cumia's. Inside Dave, yeah. Yeah, sure, when he used to work here. Mm-hmm. I remember. Before Tim. Yes. Yesterday I said to somebody, boy, if I saw Tim now, I'd hit him with an axe. (laughs) And um, that person looked at me with such shock as if I'm known as the guy who hits people with axes. (laughs) (laughs) Like, don't you know that I'm not saying I wouldn't take an axe and chop him up? I'm just saying I'm pissed off about some of the things that happened. Joey Jojo, you're from Minnesota, so you might look at this differently. Who's the rock chick of all time? Well, I know you guys might be thinking one thing, but I'm going to say Joni Mitchell. Ooh. Who are you thinking? I was going to say. Yeah. Replacements. Uh, they the are not Sorry. any women <laughs> in the replacements. I was thinking of the and, and Joni Mitchell, I would say folk chick more than rock chick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, also crushed a million dudes. Crushed them. Yeah. In her wake. As we called Kunsmith. Mm, Janice nice. has been known to crush a couple people. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, a lot of people fell in That's love with true. Janice and, you know, yeah. just got ran over. I mean, I fell well, in love with Janice. I would probably. But you know, she, right in. Um, well, who was it that she was with that she, she didn't marry anyone, right? No, but there was certain Smart dudes and bands. Lady. But by the way, one of the first rock books I read when I was a kid was called Going Down on Janice by her <laughs> female lover. And I was just like, what? <laughs> Who needs a Sears catalog when I got this shit? So, (laughs) and I don't even know whether I was familiar with any kind of lesbian activities, right? But it immediately seemed great. Woke you up, both heads. Uh, All right, let's go over to Vito. Vito, I saw you stand up here. Now, before you give your answer, 
No rustlers. It has to be. It has to be flat out. I can't say Sonny or Lita. So. Well, you could have said Cindy Lauper, I guess, because no. she was. Girls just want to. I'm going to say uh, Debbie Harry. Debbie Harry is actually a good. That's one. a that's a very good answer. Yeah, I like that. How answer? about the entire Runaways? The entire Runaways. Throw them all in. Who's your favorite Runaway? I'm gonna have to. Well, I'm gonna have to go with. Um, What's her name? Joe Burnett. Jet. Jet. Yeah. Yeah. She's pretty amazing. Yeah. Chris, who's yours? Cherry Rocket. I, I hadn't heard her use the word rocket in a while. <laughs> she was in here one day and fucking just performed right in front of me. It was one of my best oh days my doing radio. That is so cool. Worst day every other day. <laughs> Every single Come other day on. has been terrible. Joan Jett was also a principal for a day at my school. Get out of town. Did yeah. she say anything to you? Did you yes. get sent to the principal's office we, by we, purpose? Yeah, we all we were freaking out. I mean, sure. me and like my friends, a lot of other people didn't know who she was. The black but, kids. <laughs> <laughs> None so but we were freaking out, and it was during the time that she was doing the Rocky Horror Show on Broadway. Oh, yeah. So she had her head completely shaved and she was like wearing these fucking killer earrings leather jacket she was so incredibly sexy it's yeah, insane she is sexy That's as hell it was the insane. only famous person that ever came to my school was uh George Bush's mom. What's her name? I can't think of it now. George Bar- Bush's mom? Barbara, Barbara Bush. Bush. Yeah. I mean, she was a funny lady, but nothing like Joan. <laughs> Why would she come to your school? Your guess is as good as mine. I don't know. She did a little speech. Was he she the president then? jokes. Yes. That probably helped. I mean, it was a big deal, I guess, but not nearly as big of a deal as Joan Jett. Yeah. The only guy that was ever uh, famous that came to my school was a local weatherman. <laughs> and we went fucking crazy. <laughs> Because he mentioned a buddy of my name, like he was like, "Who's the weird kid?" Like who's, and I had a friend who was like real tall and crazy and always in trouble. So he was like, he drops his name. He's like, you know, I I came to the school and then he says this fucking thing. So we all just laugh like crazy. And then my friend John, fuck you, you're a fucking liar. You never even met me. And then it was the fucking best. I'm like, I wish this oh happened every God. day. Chris, who's the most famous person who came into your school? I don't remember anyone famous ever coming into my school. No. Ever. All right, let me say this. Who's the most famous person ever came on your face? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> mostly drifters. You would know. <laughs> A lot of drifters. <laughs> Boxcar Willie. <laughs> <laughs> so you never had anyone famous? I mean, you're in, you know, in New York City, you would imagine. All right, okay. Uh, Spike Lee shot. He got game while I was there in our school. Yeah, but oh, that's not the yeah. same as him coming in. Oh yeah, no, he was like, talking to the kids. Did you look out the window and say, "Little him? inspiration"? Uh, I think it was on a weekend, but I, we did see him walking around the neighborhood because he had a he owned a house across the street from Brooklyn Tech. Very. Well, he nice. left that, didn't he, for the east side? <laughs> he oh, sure oh, did. Yeah, he got the fuck yeah. out of there. <laughs> yeah, done with that fucking dump. Well, I actually, if he would have stayed, he probably, <laughs> you know, because those houses over there are going crazy right yeah, they're, now. Yeah, they're all brownstones. Yeah, they're all brownstones. It's very nice. Is that, that's supposed to be a, a, like you're helping us understand something about Brooklyn? <laughs> yeah, about we brownstones. Know. <laughs> we know. It's on the other side of the river. Yes, uh, got it. And there's a it's magic, my side of the river. There's a magical train that they say goes underneath. <laughs> but Sometimes it does. Other how, times you get stuck. And How could that happen? You get stuck a lot? Oh, it's so annoying. It's what do you do? So just sit annoying. in the train? Yeah. Sit in the train. For a What's read. the longest you've ever sat in a train? Well, Underground. It, the, the other day, it took, usually takes me 50 minutes to get to work. The other day, it took me an hour and 40. That's and just killed everybody on the train. That's I had a, yeah. a similar experience, and it was about that mm-hmm. same length of time where we moved twice, like got stuck twice. Yeah. But all together, it was probably an hour. The worst, though, is when you moving. have a crazy person in your car while sure. you're stuck and they're like That's talking about crack cocaine and stuff. And you're just like, oh, God. I always lean in and go, where are you getting <laughs> What's going on, buddy? I think crack has really gotten a really bad reputation because yeah, the amount of people who freak out and die on it. <laughs> and I just want to say, you know what I mean? Like, it seems a shame to blame all crack. Right. Jesus. What so, do you mean, Jesus? I mean, some, sometimes you can smoke a crack rock, it'll be fine. Okay. Sometimes, but not in Subway for some reason. So of all the names that we said, this is what I'm curious. Yeah. Who do you think wins definitive rock goddess of everyone that we brought up? Because she was first, Janis Joplin. Woo! Now, <laughs> in terms of full talent, writing, performing, being a genius, Patti Smith. 
All right. Gotcha. Then I'm going to take the <laughs> sexual award for Chrissy Hine, <laughs> who had a way of being masculine and feminine at the same time, which I had never seen before. Yeah. I don't remember the first time I saw Chrissy Hine, and she was all in fucking leather like mm. Elvis or Jim Morris or something. I go, I didn't know. I had no fucking I, I, th- I thought she was just amazing. Yeah, she's incredible. Not I feel like we should have also mentioned Kathleen Hanna. I would like to throw her in the mix. Too late. Uh, you had to get that in during the nomination process. <laughs> but I would like to get her just like a, have a we mention. Have left anybody out? Is there uh, anybody? Courtney Love? Well, <laughs> Courtney had that one album where she stole all of her dead husband's songs. Yeah. That one was great. And it was great. It's a great album. And those songs are incredible. Sure, because everybody wants to be the girl with the most cake. <laughs> Who does it? <laughs> but yeah, that was phenomenal. But then the she never sounded like that again. She never wrote like that again because yeah. well, she never wrote. She look. I think a lot of people didn't write the music they're credited with writing. Yeah, right. Do you like Elvis? Yeah, I like Elvis. Well, he didn't say he wrote it though. <laughs> <laughs> Elvis Presley, that is. Are you an Elvis man? Yeah, I like Elvis. What's your all-time Elvis song? <laughs> Jailhouse Rock. Nah. <laughs> I'm not so really an not, Elvis not really not. an Elvis You got caught lying. Right? I'm lying. I'm lying. Never listened to a lot of Elvis. He likes the hits. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah you're I hit like man. the hits. For Dude, I w- the, hit last week Elvis. on Turner Classic Movies, uh, there was an Elvis movie marathon, and it was fucking amazing it was the nuttiest shit you've ever seen in your life the entire script was written on toilet paper and <laughs> it, you couldn't turn it out off there was the clam bake was on and the number of dumb songs in clam bake and that you actually see a couple scenes where elvis is yawning like he couldn't <laughs> give a fuck that he was doing this movie he must have made bank though yeah, he's doing he, well, he did, he did three movies a year during the entire 60s. And it was just like he did all, they were all like kissing cousins. And like, that's my cousin, I won't give her a kiss. Yeah. <laughs> Cut. Thank you. All right, I'm out of here. <laughs> he just had a regular job. You know how like somebody will go and sell carpeting, but they don't mean it. And they act like they're interested in carpeting the whole time they're, you know, they're like, oh, let me show you a couple other patterns. And the second job's over, they're like, fuck this place. That's how Elvis was. With a movie career. <laughs> he did not give a fuck about his movie career. Did let alone his, his songs anymore. He did it for that paper. That's right. I'm coin. Well, that's because he owned half his paper to some crazy old carny. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that was his manager. The guy got 50%. 50. You do what you got to do, man. Um, all right. Here's some people want to fight with us about who we picked as our oh, okay. all-time rock chick. Bring it on. Uh, Chuck, Missouri. Hey, buddy. How yeah. about Tina Turner? Boy, that's yes. fucking great. Ooh, yes. But. Big wheels keep on turning. You hit right. the right thing. Only when she was in, uh, with Ike. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't work hard unless there was a belt at the end no. of the day. But she was off doing like private dance. I'm like, oh, this is kind of embarrassing. No, she needed but him. But any of the shit that she did with Ike was amazing. Yeah. Now, one time when I first started radio, I had Ike Turner on the phone. And he was out, you know, doing some fucking bar. And for some reason, we don't know how to do interviews yet. We bring up Tina, who we hadn't been with for like 20 some years. Like, (laughs) hey, you ever hear from Tina? (laughs) Shark, shark. (laughs) And he goes like this. Now I got faux Tinas. (laughs) (laughs) That was the funniest fucking line. I think he's like playing the crown lounge or some bullshit. (laughs) Yeah. You hear that in the background? (laughs) Um, Harold. (laughs) Harold in Jersey. Go ahead. You're on, with, right. you're on with the ladies. Yeah. Well, the, what about Grace Flick? She wrote. She was gorgeous. She sang great. She wrote a lot of the Jefferson Airplane and Starship songs. You know, later on, you know, she commercialized that. But, I mean, she's. I think she's way up there. Now, here's an interesting thing. Has anyone else has been forgotten as much mm. by history as Grace Flick? And she's still around. She's still, yeah. you know. Why is it? I don't know. I think because the airplane became the starship and, you know, Mm. built that city on rock and roll and became a fucking joke. But she was amazing and she was like badass and literally wanted a revolution. 
Yeah. She said, uh, she said in an interview recently, well, maybe about eight, nine years ago, that guys, girl, ladies my age, I think she was about 55 and um, shouldn't be singing rock, and, and she, she took a poke at Jagger, and, you know, she, and she just thought she, her time was up, but she was just too old. Uh, she, uh, she was gigantic, and also, if you ever go back and watch Altamont, she was the only rock star that was ready to fucking fight that day. She was ready to fucking fight the Hell's Angels. Uh, here's Paul, Delaware. Yo, Ronnie B. Hey, man. Hey, what about those uh, real cool chicks, L7? They had some real cool... Uh, L7 was pretty fucking cool. Chitlist is a uh, phenomenal down? song. That's a, that's a good call. Um, here is um, Robert in Birmingham. Yeah, hey, Ron. Um, yeah, somebody who sounds just as good today, just I think it's ever did, uh, Annie Lennox. Love Annie Lennox. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's, she's phenomenal. Annie Lennox came in here and had the kind of whole physicality of a king, like a medieval king. Like she would stand up strong with her hands. And it wasn't even like a queen. You know what I mean? Like there was total masculine energy to she's, her. She's very tall too, right? She's, she literally put a spell on you. She definitely felt tall. I don't know whether she was, but she yeah. seemed like she was like seven feet tall. Because every time I see an image of her, like I don't really yeah. know how tall she is, but she just looks so powerful. Like, yeah. I don't know. Well, she lasered in. We got into this weird conversation about sexual politics and Africans, things like that. And I told her that I believe that in war, men rape to hurt the other men. And she was like, fascinating. <laughs> like, I'm going to give this thought. Right. Like, she didn't understand that we don't even consider women when we're doing things like that. We just want to leave pain behind right. and we feel like we're degrading men right. in that situation not women yeah and so often when yeah. you hear it in 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 movies or in literature it's like we'll take your women like it's, it's right. property it's, it's like yeah. saying we'll take your yeah. sheep oh, well, yeah. all your livestock will be ours and also the women well people would say leave the livestock if you can <laughs> take the women but the livestock <laughs> please leave behind <laughs> but uh she was um there, there are certain people like you understand why they are stars like when yeah. they come in here i know you must have seen the same thing there's some people yeah definitely. that just a have presence a about them yeah a, a presence uh a charisma and when they look at you and they lock in on you you're like okay i'm yeah. very i'm a very important person i guess you know because <laughs> they 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 hand this thing off who's somebody for you over the years oh man so many so many people have come in and come and go I'm going to have to think about this. Like a karma a chameleon? Are you saying boy <laughs> Is that where this is going? Who so has it been for you, Chris? Jeff Bridges was pretty cool. Well, Jeff Bridges wants everybody to feel good, doesn't he? Yeah, he definitely does. He's uh, and, and when he comes, he, he shook my hand or whatever. He was just very charming. I'm going to give you one, and I did a town hall, which is a pretty impersonal thing. But he was locked in the whole time, and that was Steven Tyler. Ooh. And so when Steven Tyler mm -hmm. locks into you... You're acting, you honestly, you have a thought of, I think I'm best friends with Steven yes. Yeah. Tyler. Yes, I have a story with Steven Tyler. So I used, to, I did my internship at Disney World uh -huh. and I was in that, um, the Hollywood uh, studios, they have a, a restaurant called the 50s Cafe. Yeah. It's a themed restaurant. So I was cousin Chrissy, you know, being a bus girl and stuff. He came in for the promotion of his roller coaster and he made everybody in that restaurant feel like we were all a real family. And that's right. the, the, that's the feeling in the restaurant anyway. But I actually, when he left, I was like, I'm, I mean, we just hung out with Steven. Right. And then instead, he gave a fat tip, but he also gave his business card and his server was part of his entourage the whole day, the next day in the park. I mean, like he invited him to hang out with him and stuff. It was just such an amazing thing. Cause yeah. then you see people who came in here, like Leanne Rhymes, and we were like, what a cunt, my God. <laughs> right. You know, like she was, she was head down. She didn't want to talk to anybody we're like this is a theme restaurant get into it well you um you wonder why some people just don't learn that thing that uh, there's a famous rapper who came in here that you can see was terrified of people mm, right he putting his hand over his face and he did a special thing and the people around here only loved him you know who always got to us too is all the british movie stars mm. those guys are the most charming people I've ever met. Charmed That's pants. so interesting you said it because yesterday I had that feeling with Noel Fielding where I was like, he really locked in. He's charismatic. <laughs> and he was, he was so charismatic. And I, I like, we're in mid conversation. I'm like, I'm 
dating no <laughs> i know he had that I thing have yo this is babies. awkward we're having this yeah. moment in front of my dad but i think we're dating but the uh for me it was any of the guys that did shakespeare like when they were younger who was yeah. someone like those shakespeare actors ray fines unbelievably charismatic mm-hmm. unbelievably locks on to you and at one point like during the discussion i just saw and i would have been the only person who had seen it his eyes would water up with his sensitivity, yeah. but he wouldn't do that. You know, like his voice didn't break, but he's that sensitive to any thought and empathetic. All right, give me another one. Ben Kingsley. That's unbelievable, this guy. <laughs> yeah. Ben Kingsley is unbelievably charismatic and was like just sitting in the room like <laughs> like majestic when we walked in. <laughs> We're just like, like, oh, he's going to see us now. You're a unicorn. Jeremy Irons. He was actually too much. <laughs> Jeremy Irons came in through that door and was like this, run, and fucking came to me. Bear hugged you? He, no. Oh. Grabbed my shoulders as if one royal man would do to another. <laughs> and like me and Chris just fucking loved him. From oh, my, my God. He basically awesome. knighted you. I mean, He really was unbelievable. And, the, uh, and it's always weird, that kind of generation of English actors. All right, all right, we got to go to a break here. Yes, we do. Christine, we got to do this more. Yes, Coming up anytime. next Thank is you. Who, Chris. Uh, Mr. Samuel and Joe Mackey will be driving soon. Wow. Driving soon? Arriving soon What's is the word I meant though? to. Well, I don't is... know what driving is. Okay. I screwed that up. It's a new one. So they're going to be driving here <laughs> soon. But, Christina, where can people hear you on a. On Raw Dog every Tuesday, 8 a.m., 11 a.m., and 6 p.m. East. And then you can hear the Jay Thomas Show on Comedy Greats 94, Monday through Thursday, 4 to 6, and on Howard 101 on Fridays. Friday mornings? Friday afternoons, 2.30 to 5. Sweet. All right, we'll see you again real soon. Thank you so much, much, everybody. Let's do this a lot, okay? Yeah, Yeah. anytime. I love this. We'll be right back. Bennington. Mr. Bowie on The Bennington Show. Uh, Chris Stanley, I'm getting a lot of spy reports. Okay. Said in here that the San Francisco 49ers have a new coach. Oh, no. Some bitch run by the name of Chip Kelly. Whoa! Oh, the 49ers take him. <laughs> Chip is gone. You know, uh, <laughs> let me tell you, with that quarterback, it might be a good move for both of them. I, may, I, I heard that they, they were done with Kaepernick. But it'll be up to the coach. This is crazy. I, I mean, the old system was done with Kaepernick, but you know who won it? Kaepernick? Who? Philadelphia's coach, Chip Kelly. That was talked about this year. We're like, we just got you a fucking QB <laughs> that you said you wanted. You trade away the one you were doing well with. So do you think that they would still get rid of Kaepernick and go for a Johnny Manziel? Yeah, I think they'd still get rid of Kaepernick. I think Kaepernick isn't happy in, in the San Francisco organization. Because of the coach. You're only as happy as your as your fucking boss the boss that you see every day if you have if you work for the fucking shittiest company in the world but the guy right above you is a good dude you're like i love it here (laughs) and if you work for the best fucking company and the person above you is an asshole and is always on your back you're like this place sucks i gotta get out so really when someone says i don't like the organization they don't like the coach who else is there to deal with for the fucking players, except for a coach. Who else would be allowed to approach that man besides the coach? I mean, there's guys that can work for fucking Jerry Jones. <laughs> uh, there is some um, uh, talk about Johnny Football going to Dallas, and I couldn't think of a worse thing for him because the, that's white hot I mean, pressure and white hot partying he's gonna, that takes place in Dallas. He's from he's from Texas. He's gonna fall the fuck apart. And apparently Jerry Jones was from, from the draft was like had his eye like. Oh, he, absolutely. Uh, they talked about it the whole time. But see, here's the thing. There's just extra like playing for the New York Yankees and and uh, baseball playing for the Dallas Cowboys just means that you have more pressure on you whether you want to or not. You've got a brand new coach here at the New York Giants. Mr. Ben McAdoo, former offensive coordinator for the Giants, now got the bump up to head coach. Because, yes, let's get rid of the head coach and keep the rest of the system the way it was. It just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. I mean, I, they got to get rid of their defensive coordinator, that's for sure. I mean, McAdoo, apparently Eli likes McAdoo, and that's why they kept, that's why they brought him on. 
I would be telling Eli things are going to be a little different right now other than <laughs> what you like and what you don't like. Because the fact that you like them means we're going to have the same season that we had last year. Well, offensively, they weren't terrible other than the clock management shit. It's not what you're looking for when you have a football team. Not terrible means you're not fucking going to win the Super Bowl. The only point of doing a football team is to win the Super Bowl. They have to revamp their entire defensive fucking shit because that's where they felt. That's where they fell apart every fucking every week. It was on defense. So what makes you think that this is a great defensive fucking mind that they brought in to head coach? This is where we're not making sense. Look, let me just say something. Uh, Joey Jojo, your season went one week longer than everyone else's. Yes. Are you happy you made the playoffs now or does it feel like death? Feels like death. It feels like death. It's the only sport where anything less than all everything that's great <laughs> is just fucking unbearable death. There's going to be four teams this weekend, and there were four teams last week that I, you might, have, might as well say, why bother? Because they're out now. I mean, it made nothing. I will tell you, I, you know, the Eagles have a great winning percentage over the past 30 fucking years. It's pretty decent. It's up there with the best, except for the last game of the season. And when you don't have the last game of the season, you don't give a shit. Doesn't matter. When you're Tom Coughlin and you got a so so record, but you've got two rings, everybody's like, well, that's fucking fantastic. It's more painful when your team does well than whether they just have a shitty season. I would agree with that. Then you, at least you can enjoy and, oh, like we can bitch about this. Dude. This is not working out for us. This stinks. It's we stink. That's fine. But the idea of sometimes we stink. But sometimes we're good, and sometimes we sneak by and then have that taken when you think maybe this is going to happen. See, here's what happens. Horrible. And this is what's wrong with the fact that we're all into these stats and shit like this. If you look at AP, right? Mm -hmm. It seems like he plays really well when it doesn't matter. And I'll tell you something. If, if it's third and 25, and you hand the ball to the fucking AP... And he gains fucking 17 yards. Statistically, that looks wonderful, but it's nothing. Now, third and one, and you gain two yards, is way more valuable than that 17-yard run. But we don't fucking get that in life. It matters when it matters. I always tell Chris Stanley, you can be a drunk, drug addict, and fucking gambling idiot if you just fucking you know oh god he's writing stuff up instead of how many times i say don't write me stuff don't write him that's the fucking thing he wants me to say that mackie and sam are here and Vito's getting them that's exciting mr joe mackie and sam Rowe will be arriving shortly good all right then i'll sit here quietly until they <laughs> no talk. instead of being on the run, i had a great point i was going to make Please make we'll it. We'll never know it. I want to know it. Please, Chris, don't oh, you want to hear it? Wanna, of course I want to hear it. Then type up that you want to hear it. <laughs> type it in a language that you understand. Why do you <laughs> type like that? You're off the computer after today. <laughs> and I want to hear your poing is what he wrote. <laughs> My poing. <laughs> now he's saying, please, Ron. <laughs> he's a ball buster. This no, 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 no. By the way, you guys don't know what I'm doing tonight? We do I'm watching The Martian on demand. Are you? Yes, I'm going to see it on demand. I want to watch The Martian on demand. Maybe I'll... over. I'm having... Um, a marsh party? Well, I'm having a uh, blue apron. Okay. Toasted marshmallows to go with the theme. Um, But your brother's going to be there for it. What? Yeah, it's family night. We. How come he's allowed to come home? We do it every Thursday. We do family night. What? I'm not invited to family night? I didn't think you'd want to be there because we do so much stuff during the week. Yeah, but there's other people in the family I don't see. <laughs> yeah but you see the good one what are we waiting for after that long fucking tape <laughs> they're coming down the hall right now but why so why would you type that to me and stop me three minutes ago yeah right when he's in middle mid point see she busts your balls you bust my balls she busts your balls it's fucking a nightmare and mr uh the Joe, this nice song for them. <laughs> Mr. Joe, Joe, Mr. Joe, man, nice Thank song. You. Good. Mr. Joe, play your lovely song. But when, when we want them to hear it, yes. <laughs> Sam and Joe, oh, oh, the Joe Star Lifesaver. Dear Sammy, I. Saw
saw you headlines for 30 minutes. You cleaned up, found Maggie hotter than young Ben Affleck. These comics, Joe and Sam, killing more crowds than Manson. Sam Morrell, Joe Maggie, I'm drowning in a handsome boy. Yes, we're all drowning in a handsome vault, even though that seems impossible. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. Oh, my God. Joe Mack and Sam Roller in studio. Joe Mack is performing at the Hartford Funny Bone in Hartford, Connecticut, today through Sunday, January 17th. Go to funnybone.com for tickets and more information. And Sam Roller's album, Class Act, is available now on iTunes and Amazon.com. And, you know, even though they aren't a comedy duo, we always think of them together. <laughs> and really, just like Ben and Matt, you guys never work together anymore. Yeah, we do. You do? Yeah, we, Good. I mean, we do. I mean, we're bouncing around the city all the time. So we is do that right? Yeah. Working on a couple of show ideas together. I yeah. I prefer that people don't think of us <laughs> as a comedy yeah. duo or even friends. Now, is there? <laughs> <laughs> He's rough on Sam. He but, comes out of the gate. Yeah, he does. and you got to respect it. But you, uh, what's it like for you when you've got to follow the handsome vault? If it's a night that you're coming on, well, the crowd's after. usually hungry for jokes, and uh, they're like, we're, we're not satisfied. And, <laughs> we need uh, we need something, so it's it's nice. Yeah, uh, seeing seeing Sam try to follow me is like is like every time a scientist finds a giant squid, it's just dead. <laughs> just on the beach, just lying there. I can't, it's gigantic. I it's can't impressive. deal with his nerd references all yeah. the time. You know, I don't I don't even know where to go. G lots of people know about giant squid, Sam. <laughs> 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 no, you're right. Sea life is for nerds. Um, but you guys do. How you know? How how far back do you guys go together? At least ten years. Ten we years. Met, we met in our first comedy class. Wow. We took a comedy class. Do you believe Sam took a comedy class? <laughs> At the comic strip, yeah. Upper East Side. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was like, "Who is this attractive woman?" And uh, <laughs> she has great jokes. Well, uh, at least I'm attractive. <laughs> now, wouldn't you expect for Sam to be the bully? But I it's would. Really, not true. I love this dynamic. Yeah, it is. It's very interesting. He's well, only you... like this with me. He does, I, I bring out the terrible side of him. Well, he's a but, wonderful person, otherwise. Well, you know what's great is I I've had him on, and he's ripped you even when you're not here you're not in the room i talk about you behind your back <laughs> but also in front of his front so it works out it works it's I got, his family. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I got all these tweets this morning because I guess you trashed me on Red Eye last night. <laughs> I actually was very. I didn't even. I didn't even mention you. They just assumed. Yeah. They probably DVR'd it and assumed I did. Uh, but oh, they said I, something like you took the higher road. I took the they, high road. I yeah. dug him yeah. last week. They asked me, and I was like, I don't. I don't talk to him. He's fake, you know. And uh, I guess you took the higher road. Well, first of all, Joe Mackey, fake it, like all the orgasms that women you've had intercourse with. <laughs> Ouch! He got Ouch! You. He got you. They do fake <laughs> orgasm with you, Sam. It's a well-known fact. But I, had, Joe Mackey at Fox News, they must have thought young Ronald Reagan had come back to life. <laughs> I'm like, I, one for the Kipper. Yeah. You really do look like 1953 Ronald Reagan. People say I look like the big boy from Big Boy's Restaurant. <laughs> uh, La Gnome. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Uh, and Tom Cruise. Damn, <laughs> people can be truthful. So <laughs> harsh. Well, but when you guys are back in the city, you know, because now Sam's in a big relationship, and that yeah. spot that you, you know, that relationship, I think is where Joe used to be in your life. He was your confidant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now I just, this. you know, I take it out on her, I guess. You know, <laughs> I, uh... I miss her talks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, Joe's got a girl too, so you know, we just Do you guys double? No. No, no. She lives Dana. in LA, so when uh when she comes to town, I usually, you know, <laughs> get about a month of sexual uh, backup I'm, out. I'm new at even having dates, yeah. so you want to kind of ease them into to Sam. <laughs> You're like I I have this I have this acquaintance and uh, Joe's you know, new to a lot of things like explaining the belt around his neck to the girl. I mean, it's a lot of stuff to break down. Hardy heart, Sam. That's uh, good. That's good. Have you met his uh, girl? Of course. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We went to a Knicks game the other night. 
Um, so, man, that Knicks team, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're fun. Yeah. They're, they're fun, but they lost to the Nets. <laughs> Without Melo. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But, you know. Well, I like seeing twins that have different hair play against each other. That is the exciting <laughs> It is. Exciting thing. And you're actually thinking the long, crazy hair actually looks better to me. I like him better because he's like the hustle type. Those guys are yeah. rare. Like the. Yeah, Brooke is the better offensive player and he blocks shots, but. Uh... Aaron just hustles every play. Robin. Every play, Robin. Yeah. Robin. Yeah, I always get those two. They uh, hate that. the flaw. You think? The yeah, flaw, yeah. They hate when you get them mixed up. <laughs> I heard that they wanted to live together, but their cats don't like each other. Are you serious? Yeah, they can't. They they wanted to get an apartment. These two gigantic men, and they're like, our cats don't like each other. <laughs> it's adorable. Yeah. That's, they're that's, keeping us apart. <laughs> that's how expensive New York is. <laughs> like, NBA players are like we need to team up. There really is a guy on the Nets who has like three roommates. Is that he's right? Trying to save money. Like I actually, you know, in New York, it might be smart. Well, there are even some guys um, who live up in Westchester and just drive in, you know? They're probably not accustomed. Even, like, a nice apartment in New York is so small. That the, a lot of these guys probably aren't used to that, you know? Well, there are a lot of people that if you lived in the suburbs when you first moved to New York, you feel like you're suffocating. And then suddenly you get used to it. And now I look at people that have giant houses as being, like, gluttonous. Like, wh- he's got an eight-bedroom house. I'm like, why? Yeah. He doesn't need it. He looks insane now. <laughs> it feels haunted. I was, in a, I was in a hotel the other night that was huge, and I was like, this is terrifying. I don't like this. There's you know? probably... Probably not many people there if it was attached to the comedy club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, your head show is up in a few months. So that always stink too. <laughs> well, you know why? That's the shining. That's the shining yeah. effect. Oh, yeah. That you've, if you've ever been in a giant hotel after the shining, you're like, uh, maybe we should get out of here. But it's also the, being city people when there's quiet, it's scarier to us. Yeah. No. But the shining effect is interesting because even in a hotel where you have no windows in the hallway, yeah. You leave the you leave your hotel room in the day, I don't consider it. And yet at night, even though the lighting has not changed, right. it's like I know that it's night and you go and get some ice and you're like, it's really fucking scary in here. I need to run know, back to my room right Do you now. know how much the lobby of your building and the hallways in your building remind me of the shining? So much. Yeah. So much it's insane. Like it's between the shining and then it also kind of, I, it's not as nice, but it reminds me of, uh, what's it called on the West Side? The one in the scary movie. There. Oh, the one with uh, the baby. The, the what, yeah, yeah, what's the name of that? Rosemary's Baby. Rosemary. Yeah, Rosemary's Baby. Yeah. So uh, we thought of both of those things when we moved in. Right we, away. Right away. And we're like, we we can't live here. And then all of our neighbors seemed weird to us because of it. And we thought they were all in some sort of weird cahoots against yeah. us. Yeah. It's a scary building. It's it's a little well, bit. Yeah, I'm gonna say what else is scary. Your elevator just has a fucking doorknob. Yeah, it's, and, uh, it's one of those strange. old. It's an old like pre-war building, so it's a very old elevator. But yeah, you open it like a door. It's and the blood no just window. pours down. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Joe Mackey's waiting for you with the twin Joe Mackey. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. Because what would you do with all that vault? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so overwhelmed by yeah. vault right now. <laughs> So this girl, she's crazy about the handsome vault. This oh, she's in there. She's a nice girl. Is this maybe a little more serious than we expected? Oh, I I try to take it slow. You know. Yeah. You can't. Uh, you, you get all the <laughs> beautiful babies trying to get their, <laughs> their talons in me. You know. Sure. Kind of, but you've been known as that bachelor around town. Anytime, you know, New York Magazine does the That's eligible yeah. bachelors or timeout, it so always goes back to the handsome vault. He really, I've seen him turn down women, and it's the funniest. One time after a show, this girl was goo goo gaga for Mackie, and sure. he, just, he just whispers to me, he's like, let's, uh, let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> we just went out through the back. Yeah. <laughs> she was too overwhelming. Sometimes people are crazy, though. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, dude, yeah. she had a weird vibe. Yeah. No question. Crazy she was party. pretty, but she had a weird vibe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's usually uh, those are the girls that uh, Sam Gray gets with. <laughs> How dare you speak that way about my lovely, lovely L.A. flame? No, n- n- not that one. Just the uh, the ones before. <laughs> I know. Well, with your chick, uh, I noticed a lot of people got confused that you were the ex-boyfriend. I know. And not the new I called him, like, maybe uh, send an updated picture just to <laughs> get me uh, out of the line of fire. I've been pretty great to you. <laughs> Were you surprised that that story had the uh, the legs that it turned out to have? Yeah, of course. Yeah, 
yeah, it's <laughs> it's not what you want, right? You know, but uh, she's got so much uh, great comedy that she won't be. It won't be a situation where it's like you get heat for that and then um, right. fizzle out. Like she'll she'll like so many people are like finding them being like, oh, she's a great comic, so, right? You know, and pe- people are gonna remember the great comedy part. It's it's almost like Hannibal Burris, you know, you know, yeah. he's such a funny guy, and then all anyone talks about is. The Cosby thing. I'm like, no, catch his act. I like, know. Well, here's the thing about Hannibal. He never did a follow up. He never mm-hmm. played off of it. And someone taped that without his permission at a right. show. And that's just how the internet works. I mean, has he ever done any interview about it? Or? He just kind of turns it down and says, this is no big deal. I just said <laughs> this thing. I just ruined the most powerful man yeah. in the country. It's not I, really a- I just busted his balls back, basically. <laughs> but the thing is, I think 98% of the people would have said, oh, yeah, I'm going to get on Oprah or 60 Minutes yeah. or whatever. And he was just like, no, it's just one thing I said. I remember one time, I uh, this is many, many years ago, Don Johnson called my show and we had an argument. And he was drunk, even though he was supposed to be sober. And, like, he checked into fucking rehab immediately after this call. And it made all the magazines, you know, because he was so famous. But since then, about once every one or two years, one of these bio things calls me up and says, hey, would you like to come on? We're doing this stuff. I'm like, no, I'm not going to follow this man around for the rest of his life. Uh, you shit remember up. when you were drunk that one morning? It was 6 a.m. Why were you that drunk? Because I'm up early. Because I'm out late. I was up early because I was out late. But That's it's a, weird how some things... Work. Most comics don't want it, though. I mean, you, you you want to be known for your act. You don't want to be known yeah. for that, because then you're answering those questions your whole life. You right. know what I mean? And, and I think she's like... She got contacted by all those people, and she's like, no, I want to be... Yeah, a- I've never seen her really do, like, an interview on it, right? Yeah, I don't think she wants to do it. But the part that made me laugh was people like, wait, is she talking about Sam? Oh, I, yeah. I, I think I, well, that we have a different sense of humor. Has that made you laugh? <laughs> Did not make me laugh. I think it's really brave that that uh, Sam can come here and say that most comedians want to be known for their act. <laughs> <laughs> He's a machine. Yeah. He's a machine with it. I, it's just uh, yeah, she uh, pick up Sam's album class act to find out what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, and pick up Joe's album, which is not out yet because they had to edit in some laughs. It's taken a while, so. Uh, well, that uh, that half hour comedy special you did was just heat, man. That was, Thank that you. was awesome. Thanks, First man. of all, it was really great, but it, it was, was okay. also so pretty ballsy, you know, pretty edgy for what yeah. most people. Well, you call it edgy. That. My mom called it upsetting, really okay. dirty. <laughs> Well, I was like, wow, you did a joke yeah. about a miscarriage. It's that like that nice. movie, uh, The Seventh Seal with De- Demi Moore, where she ha- she's pregnant with the Antichrist, and then Sam's bored, and you're like, no! Maggie's career is like the Demi the Moore movie, Disclosure. The Apocalypse. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was fun to do. Yeah. So, uh, I wish more people watch it. I feel like everyone's watching the streaming things now. You know. Well, somebody told me like with a lot of those things, it's not an uh, it's not an immediate. It just keeps over time. So a lot of people said that they'll hear about things six months after they put it out. Or yeah, I mean, I'm planning on outing Cosby again. I mean, yeah. they'll get a second <laughs> wave. You know. Yeah. So I'll also say that that he molested you. <laughs> He drugged me. Yeah. The Cosby thing, I think, is great because Cosby doesn't seem to give a fuck. I don't know whether you saw him showing up at court with that crazy sweater on, <laughs> and he acted like he says he's blind now, and it's just, <laughs> it's really great. With a cane that wasn't touching yeah. the ground. He was just yeah. holding holding a cane. I, I don't know. It's like hard to pick your like arraignment wardrobe, though. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, though. It looks like, oh, is he that guy from Sanford and Son? He does look like Red Fox. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's racism, I think, on some level. I Being outed know. has made yeah. him a dirty comic now. <laughs> Sam, yeah. stop doing an impression of me saying that I think Cosby looked like Red Fox. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good impression you the were doing. Sweater is, uh, it's dead on. Yeah, you can't really change your attire, I guess, the at this sweater point. T- is upsetting to me because it looks like it's made out of his own facial hair. <laughs> I think it looks like a rape blanket, as if he's ready to take that off and lie it down for one of his rape victims. But yeah, it does match his beard completely. Yeah, he uh, he looks, it's just, he must be broken down. If you're like, you have any human left in you, this must just break you. 
Well, he also has the nine hundred million, which you know. Yeah, but you can't do anything fun if you can't go out in public. What do you do? Just like chill in and have this sad in life? this country. But don't you think there's plenty of other places? Like I don't know why he's not in Thailand or someplace like that. Like fuck this. Not even. Not even yeah. letting it get to that. Like as soon as he heard Hannibal, he was like, "Up, let's go, everybody." <laughs> he's just back up. He's just lighting papers on fire, <laughs> throwing them in the trash cans. I'm curious to see him like pop into an alt room or something to see how yeah. he get like received. <laughs> I think he'd get booze, don't you think? Probably. Um, I mean, and the material probably wouldn't be. <laughs> so what's been going on in in my life, everybody? <laughs> Did you hear Judd Apatow's joke about him? No. Oh my god, it's so funny about how he's like. Uh, he just uh, his uh, his wife. He's trying to like act out his material, and he's like, "So my wife, she keeps seeing the newspaper on the front uh, porch, and I'm like, don't look, Camille, don't look." <laughs> and then finally, she's like, "What is this?" And I said, "Do you like your life?" <laughs> well, here's the thing about Camille: they want her to come in because they think that she's been part of the cover up. You know, it's there such was... a terrible position for someone like that. I feel bad for like her, Sandusky's wife, because that's like y- 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 there must be so much, uh, so much cover up going on it within. You well, know? I think I think Camille was holding the the high heels and the nylons. I think that was her job, <laughs> <laughs> just to stand there with them. <laughs> Henry, put her clothes back on. Look at the guy that's got him by the arm. Though looks like the typical. Philadelphia detective of all time. Like, you could have pulled that out of 1945. The guy would have looked the same. We're resting, Cosby. Wear your blue suit. <laughs> it's like part of the, There's going to be like a new Spotlight movie, but about Cosby next year. Yeah. You know? They're going to be like, there's 90 women that keep moving them to other comedy clubs. There's no one that's even allowed to buy that suit but cops. You have to be. <laughs> you have to show your badge before you can buy something that color. <laughs> hey, are you guys uh, into football this year? Are you excited about the the playoffs? Or you don't care. Ah, uh, I watched the Steeler match the other day. Yeah. The, the Steeler football game. <laughs> yeah, that was ugly. You can tell he knows a lot about sports because he calls it a match. <laughs> well, I know a lot about sports, Sam. <laughs> sports and sea, sea life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, remember when he didn't know about a giant squid? <laughs> but, but, yeah, I, you sounded remember ignorant. That. <laughs> You're ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> but like uh, you know there was so much fighting going on and they didn't they didn't say they you know people talk about the two pal- the two the two yeah. hits with the helmet the helmet where the one receiver caught the ball and they said he was a runner so they didn't call anything and then the other one where they did call the helmet the helmet but there was a whole bunch of fights besides that where it was ugly yeah now here's the thing Steelers always considered the class organization but then they have these ugly rivalries with everyone else at some point <laughs> this team is the one in fights I think what all happened the time. I think what happened was uh you know they had uh, Art Rooney and Chuck yeah. Knoll yeah. and that legacy takes it takes a long time for people's reputations to change like Sam could start doing volunteer work <laughs> and all people are going to be like that guy's just just awful <laughs> <laughs> Not the yeah. kids that I read to every night. Oh, that's so yeah. sweet. I'm trying to turn it around. Nice. Wow. One at a time. That's yeah. how you get it. I don't see you down at the uh, foundation, Mackie. Dominant better foundation. <laughs> you're at that one. <laughs> yeah, it was weird to just see them, uh, the Bengals just collapse. It was weird. It's weird well, to just see. Traditionally, that works. Yeah. I mean, that happens with that team. And people blame Marvin Lewis, the coach. Yeah. And they're like, how, how, how come he doesn't have control of his players? I'm like, you really tell an adult person not to have a personal foul in the last seconds of a game that might help their team win. Right. If you're that stupid, like how can you how can you tell that guy well, not to do Pac-Man something? Pac-Man was surprised to see Joey Porter in their huddle calling him different names. That is that is true. That is <laughs> <Yeah>. odd. <laughs> now you grew up a Steelers fan. I'm an Eagles fan. And Pennsylvania has won six Super Bowls. So we're so proud of our state <laughs> between Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. It's amazing. Six amazing And this coming back to why the Giants have, what, five or four? Well, how many have? have they won? Four. Four? Yeah. They've won four, and the Jets won one. And they'll, But the weird thing is if you go back before the Super Bowl, you have a bunch more yeah. championships. Right. Like, that sucks. Like, all those teams from the 50s. The Browns with Frank Gifford are Frank Gifford. Our NFL championship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got my NFL championship certificate. <laughs> they really... Uh, Nothing to people. Yeah, they, I really don't like how they did Coughlin. If it reminded me a little bit of Joe Torre, in a way. The uh, we're waiting for it because it looks like he might sign with Philadelphia. Yeah. That, would hurt. that would really hurt. Yeah, 
He's, I loved him. I mean, he was unconventional. I remember when they had Tiki Barber and it was fumbling all the time and he got him to stop fumbling. Yeah. But when uh, the Strahan was kind of trashing him at first and then he, he got the team to rally around him, I think he, he adapted. He was a versatile He did coach. adapt. I liked him a lot. Yeah. Uh, uh, have you guys noticed this, though? Every commercial with a football star is a guy who's long retired. Right. For some reason... <laughs> They don't have any of the the guys playing today. No, but you'll see Peyton. That's it. Yeah, Peyton is the only guy yeah. today. And Aaron Rodgers, I guess. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers got the discount double check, yeah. which it's great. I'm which is what with. they call uh, nope. what they call Mackey's tickets on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Well, he did. It, they'll, they'll sell out, though. <laughs> Good point. So you know, I was just I was just so taken aback by that uncalled for. <laughs> it was. For a second. It was Nobody was of, way, you know ready for that. It just came out of nowhere. I was like, is Sam insulting my ticket sales? <laughs> <laughs> the audacity. Joe Mackey and Sam Rowler in studio. Joe Mackey's performing at the Hartford Funny Bone tonight through Sunday, January 17th. And Sam Rell's performing at the St. Louis Funny Bone, February 3rd through the 6th. Go to funnybone.com for tickets and Sam Rell's album. Class Act is available now on iTunes and Amazon.com. You know, why would we just be sitting here talking and laughing when we could be listening to that song one more time? <laughs> Joe put this song together. And from gotta, what I'm understanding, it's climbing the charts. Um, I got I to gotta record this. I love it. Well, we'll, we'll give you the SoundCloud oh, okay. on your way out. Okay, right, this is, you know, we're almost in the 20s. You don't have to hold a microphone up to the radio. <laughs> we're climbing, 20s, dude. Begins, that's, so. that's how I get all this my like music. young Elvis. <laughs> Will the 20s be roaring again? I hope so. Some people be roaring. You know, the best. Yeah, I, I think what we've got to do now is plan the video with you guys in it <laughs> and <laughs> drop it off at MTV back in 1986. Just like uh, the Weezer song, Say It Ain't So, the rest is about Sam's drinking. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, uh, you're also known to put a few away, though, right? You're a... Uh, I'll have a brewski or two. Every now and then. <laughs> he likes to unwind. Yeah, he does. He's constantly unwinding. He is, he is one of the yeah. most fun people to drink with. Because yeah. he's just an upbeat. He just gets drunk and he just starts telling you how much he loves you. It's like a, it, most people get drunk and they get surly. Mackie gets drunk and he gets nice. Yeah, I get uh, I get emotion goggles when I tell Sam I love him. I'm <laughs> just teasing Sam, I love you. We uh, when, when I was at the Hart Ma Maggie's going to the Hartford Funny Bone tonight. When yeah. I was there, I they do the upcoming acts, and I was there yeah. last month, so I, I videoed Mackie, and I just spun it around to give a big thumbs down. <laughs> I just send him videos of him telling him he stinks. I I try to send you nice videos. Oh, that's nice. I don't like when he I don't like when he becomes sneaky nice. <laughs> Kind of, out of nowhere. Just trying to fool the crowds. Yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully, um, you guys, one of you guys will speak at the other's funeral, right? I mean, there's that. So, Sam, do everything you can do to stay alive. And hopefully, <laughs> Sam will die slowly. <laughs> we have a hellfish situation, you know? It's me and Mackie, three other comics. <laughs> I'm going to do a David Bowie thing. I'm going to be laying in a bed like Lazarus, uh, only I'm going to say Joe Mackey is not a man. That's how I'm going to do it. Props to Bowie for really finding a great way to promote his new album. It's <laughs> his first number one album because no one's ever pulled off this kind of marketing. It's amazing. It's he really is. A, he really was a man. He was so cool. He was. And now Alan, uh, Alan Reichman died today. Amazing. He's and again, actor. the 69 Club. I don't know what it is about people. Yeah. It's 69. Yeah. Well, new club we didn't even realize. Yeah, Sad. all dying of natural causes. It's Both quietly spooky. of cancer. I mean, that's, that's a conspiracy. How, that's so on Rockstar to die like that, though, to like just be surrounded by your family quietly. I mean, he he went. I mean, it but sucks he, he was what, that young. What but... he did, he stayed a mystery, and, and that's what is almost impossible. Yeah. to do these days to be that big. Yeah, yeah, to be as well known. I mean, he's been famous for at least forty years. And then caught everybody off guard. Well, first of all, people were writing how great, like, how great at 69 he's making a terrific album. And then hours later, yeah. he's gone. Yeah. It, it's crazy. To, to be that relevant still and, and to still have people wanting more from you yeah. at 69 years old. Yeah. Well, you know, when you, Gail called me, it was the one who told me, and I, I was ready to hear that he was shot or, you know, Playing Crash or something. <laughs> Ever since John Lennon, I'm waiting to hear that everybody was murdered. 
Yeah. Right. You know, since that point on, murdered by a fan. I guess a fan. I don't know whether you can still call him that <laughs> after the shooting. Super fan, really? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's just sad, man. He's just yeah. he was so great for so long. So, you know, he kept changing. He yeah. did. He ch 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 changed quite, <laughs> quite, quite a bit. He that, wore uh, this. That extras cameo is one of the best ever. You we see that? we played that the other day. Oh, uh, I got to play it for Mackie. It's so. Funny. Uh, have you ever seen it with, no. with Ricky Gervais? All right, here's what we. Uh, so he, I'm going to set the premise up, but don't it's even amazing. start it before the song. We'll start it right before. So Gervais, he did this show called Extras, and he basically played a comic who sold out with a really hacky show. So he's making... When the Whistle Blows. Yeah. It's the worst show, but it gets six million viewers. <laughs> yeah, in England. So uh, he sells out for this show, but he, now he's not happy. He wants the success, and that's why... He, so he's not happy. So he's at this bar, and he sees his hero, David Bowie, and goes over to talk to him. So make sure we got enough volume on it, too, Chris. Hi. Hi, hi. We were just saying that um, I'm an entertainer too. Oh, yeah? Um, what do you do? I'm in a sitcom. It's called When the Whistle Blows. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? I haven't, no. Is it any good? No, it's shit. Oh, just riffraff everywhere. Not going down too well, huh? It's getting six million viewers. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's not exactly how I meant it to be because the BBC have interfered and sort of chased ratings and made it the lowest common denominator sort of comedy, sort of catchphrases and wigs and... I, I think I've sold out, to be honest, but yeah, it's difficult, isn't it, when they, to keep your integrity when you're going for that first... Little fat man who sold his soul. The little... Little fat man who sold his dream. Chubby little loser. Chubby little loser. National joke. No, not, not chubby little loser. No. <laughs> Pathetic little fat man, no one's bloody laughing. The clown that no one laughs at, they all just wish he'd die. He's so depressed at being useless, the fat man takes his own life. No, no. He's so depressed at being hated. Fatty takes his own life. Fatty, fatso, fatty. fatso. I like fatso. Yeah, let's go with fatso. Fatso takes his own life. He blows his bloated face off. No. He blows his stupid brains out. But the twat would probably miss. Yes, Linda, I like that. Yeah, so do I. It's brilliant, Linda. He sold his soul for a shard of fame. Catchphrase and wig and the jokes are lame. He's got no style, he's got no grace, he's banal and facile, he's a fat waste of space. Yeah, yeah. Everybody sing that last line. One, two, three. He's banal and facile, he's a fat waste of space. See his pop, no space. <laughs> oh, brilliant. It's, it's too good. It's too funny. The Ricky's reaction shots of just. Like, <laughs> it's so sad. It's so well, <laughs> that's the thing about him is like, physically, he's amazingly funny. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what was the the comedy team the silent like from the 30s or Laurel 40s? Laurel Hardy. Yeah, he he said that he studied them when he was a kid, uh, and that's why yeah. you'll see a lot of the office when he would be in trouble. Yeah, he would just be grabbing at his head, <laughs> like, not sure what everyone meant. You see him doing it there, where he would just be like, okay, just really funny stuff that could be lost completely in the joke, and yet like subconsciously, I think it works. It's increasingly painful that scene. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Well, that was <laughs> the joy I, of everyone around yeah. him. <laughs> yeah, I thought that Gervais, uh, when I first saw him in the office, and there's only some people that can really pull this off, is like 
you fucking hate them when they're on top. But the minute they lose, it breaks your heart. You yeah. want them to do better. Jeffrey Tambor had that on the Larry Sanders yes. show. Right. That this you're like, oh, this poor guy, the poor guy. As soon as someone would work his way, you're like, oh, this creep. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, amazing. There's, there's like a, there's like a humanity to them where you're just like, like, ah, oh, this poor guy. Yeah. But then the second they win, you're like, fuck this asshole. <laughs> yeah. it's like the Corral worst in the office too. Yeah, yeah. Jeffrey Tambor always had that because it would be he would be on the top of the world with something, yeah. and then like a scene later, he'd be like sobbing, <laughs> yeah. like that really incredible cry face yeah. that he has. <laughs> I thought that the last uh, scenes of the. Uh, of that show in the last episode where he just turned on them and he was like, you fuckers, <laughs> yeah. fuckers. And then he leaves. And then like ten, five minutes later, he just comes back and hugs everybody. <laughs> it was really so great. Yeah. Shanling had, you know, wrote most of those and stuff. To be able to find that in somebody else is always amazing to me, too. Yeah, Rip Torn, yeah. too. I mean, he had like two amazing comic actors yeah. on that show. I mean, and, so in the supporting cast. Yeah. And Rip Torn hasn't been able to work with anyone else for years because he's got the um, you know samurai uh, elbow problem <laughs> just constantly <laughs> drinking but yeah. you know, he's supposedly like a real mean drunk and will show up that way yeah. really yeah. i didn't know that yeah i heard he's been macking pretty hard lately. <laughs> yeah. is that is that I phrase thought, caught on you I, I, thought, <laughs> I thought i thought when that happens it means that you're ha you're a happy drunk <laughs> I, when you said elbow sam's elbow problem i thought it was drugs <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, which what, which one of which one of Sam's many problems that he uses his arms for? <laughs> he was on uh, Thirty Rock though, Rip Torn. He was great on Thirty. Oh Rock. yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. they wrote off his character. I mean, they're like, he's dead. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's I always, always like, a bad sign. <laughs> yeah, I always like it when you. Yeah, he died off camera uh, okay, anyway. during the summer. <laughs> during the summer. <laughs> We're really sad about it. <laughs> yeah, sad. So we're going to have the funeral without his body. <laughs> that Charlie Sheen funeral that they did. Here's his jacket. Oh, God. Yeah. Charlie Sheen, what happened? Well, the other I mean, day I know what happened. But... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to go from, like, Men at Work, which is one of the greatest movies <laughs> ever made. <laughs> <laughs> To, to now, just, <laughs> what a fall from grace! Yeah, I mean, dude, he he had a Sheen had a run, dude. I mean, oh sure, so long. He's in some great Platoon is great, Wall Street's great. Platoon and Wall Street were like the head and shoulders above, but the, you know that TV ran for like twelve years. Yeah, and he was getting like two million dollars a week. Yeah. And and dude, Spin City, I I liked it. I think he was great on it. But, you know. I forgot about Spin City. Oh, yeah. He came in when, uh, when Michael J. Fox left, and everyone, and you always set up to fail in that position. Yeah. I thought he did great, but you know. yeah, Hot Shots, Hot Shots, Hot shots. one and, and sure. two, great comedic actor. Yeah, in those movies. He you plays know, it so straight. The uh, <laughs> the Handsome Vault should have a critic show where he's sitting around. <laughs> Hey, what are the Razzies? I haven't heard those yet, uh, Chris. Yeah, the Razzies for us. Uh, because I, I can't tell the difference between the Razzies and the Oscars <laughs> yeah. this year. They they're, seem pretty the similar. Same. Yeah. The Razzie nomination. Yeah, they came out for this year. The For Bet for Worst Picture, it's Fifty Shades of Grey. First of all, I love that you say picture. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> worst Picture. Yeah. Pixels. Jupiter Ascending. Oh, yeah. They all look bad. And Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. So they mm. pick four. Yeah. And I haven't seen any of them. Me either. Wait, the, the, did you say Fifty Shades of Grey? Yeah, Fifty Shades of Grey. I think yeah. that's on HBO or something now. I now thought that's that worth that watching. I mean, I didn't see it, but I thought people, they didn't like that movie. <laughs> oh, that, God. I well, they're making a second one. I'm not, you know, it's a Are they really making a second? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I it thought made it was some like money, a, right? It made money, yeah. yeah. The critics hated it, but, you know. Yeah, it looked like just a disaster. But. Sure. Just watch porn. Why do you need, <laughs> yeah, why do you need that? So weird, it's so, right? It's so silly. There's a whole internet of of porn for you. Yeah, it's uh, well. It's Chris actually goes into the deep uh, web, the dark web, where you can see you see porn and snuff films. I mean, there, there's porn out there, and yes, there's snuff. But have you seen the snuff? I've seen. I've watched the snuff. Or two what? Before, yeah, that's disgusting. How could you say good. that? Just like that's a normal thing. It's, I know it's not a normal thing. What do they thing. do? They murder third world prostitutes. 
Uh, it mm. could be men being murdered as well. Sam, you're into stuff films, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you don't hear snuff a lot. <laughs> snuff is a real throwback term. <laughs> <laughs> it's like saying we're going to go see a picture right now. <laughs> we're going to a stag party. <laughs> <laughs> snuff. Would but deep would deep throat be a snuff film? Is that what? You, no, no, no. Snuff is where you kill the prostitute oh, and yeah. yeah. someone, yeah. someone yeah. dies. Oh wow! I yeah. didn't even know. It's that. a very much of a third world or Mexican like a basic cartel. instinct. Russian. Like, who does that benefit? <laughs> you know, like, like oh, I want to watch pornography, but yeah, you know, she if she doesn't die. Well, yeah, it's for the people <laughs> masturbating to, and then going, wait, she lives How about almost, that? Oh, thank almost. Oh, thank God, <laughs> that's it. There's She's leaving guilt. now. They want, they want a twist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, there's enough guilt associated with masturbating. I don't need I don't need there to be a crime scene unit on top of it. All right, what uh, what do we got for best how worst you, actor? How do you cast that too? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's gonna feel bad they didn't get it. I didn't even get the God snuff damn film. Damn it! I thought it was a shoe. You know what? I'm leaving LA. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> My uncle has a spot in the mall, and I'm just gonna go back and work for him. <laughs> worst actors: Johnny Depp and Mordecai. Ooh, it did, that looked it. pretty bad. Yeah, I, I didn't see it, but just based on the trailer, it looked like it was trying really hard. <laughs> right, we could do a bad trailer show where the trailer okay. is yeah. so bad, you <laughs> won't see it. Jamie Dornan, Fifty Shades of Grey, he was the star. He was the dude. Kevin James and Paul Blart. They're a little rough on Kevin James. <laughs> I like days. Kevin James, man. <laughs> Kevin James is um, sitting in a house made out of money yeah. and feeling okay about himself. <laughs> Adam Sandler double nominated for both The Cobbler and Pixels. I didn't yeah. know oh, Pixels came out, but I didn't know The Cobbler came out to regular movies. Yeah, it actually came out. It was that a, guy Tom McCarthy directed it, who did like Spotlight, and uh, and he did that really great movie, uh, The Visitor, too. Is that right? He's like a great director. In this one, he was just like uh, basically doing home movies for Adam. <laughs> yeah. What do you want, dude? I'll just point it. Whatever you tell me. Thanks for all this cash. And then Channing Tatum and Ju for Jupiter Ascending. Oh, okay. I did not watch that, but it seemed like a movie that I would watch. I like. The... I watched it on a plane, yeah. uh, just parts on mute, and on mute it was so bad that I can't imagine how bad it would be with sound. So I, was I... Gonna, thought you were going to say you walked out. <laughs> <laughs> that is bad. Yeah. <laughs> Worst actor actress is Catherine Heigl for Home Sweet Hell, which I have no idea what that even is. That's why she tells her mom she's a lesbian, I think, and they say and like and they say it's like really offensively ridiculous. <laughs> Well, because people would not be overly shocked today to hear that yeah. there's a lesbian in their family. <laughs> it's not a ballsy premise anymore. Yeah. No. What? No. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the trans thing has has bypassed anything else. Yeah. Where you're saying, I'm going to become a woman. And even now, you go on TV and people are like, my eight-year-old uh, thinks he's a girl. And I'm like, I remember when I thought I was a cowboy. <laughs> I went, you can't listen to that kid. You're transitioning I dressed up like a cowboy every day. <laughs> Never once even wanted to get on a horse. I just wanted to walk around like a fancy cowboy. I was going to be a pro basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cute. That is adorable. He grew up in state college. Uh, he was one of the kids that lived in the city. It's a, it's a beautiful town. A townie, mm. as they're called. Yep. It's uh, yeah. You'll spend a, a month there one night <laughs> if you go to <laughs> one of our bars. Oh man, uh, but it's a beautiful town. It's it it's mostly good. There was one thing that you may have heard of that happened there. <laughs> a lot of people say it's the biggest scandal in sports history. I don't know. I mean, the uh, Black Sox through the World Series. <laughs> that was that was bad. Yeah. <laughs> so that kind of brought the whole town down, did it? Everybody felt like it, you know? For like a two-year period, every time someone found out I was from there, I was instantly thrust into a conversation about pedophilia. <laughs> 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 it started with them joking about it. And you know, that's not an everyday conversation. No, no. I mean... Here and and then Mackie People tells you he's Catholic, and now all those conversations go away, so... <laughs> Did you grow up a Catholic boy? Mm -hmm. Still nice. am. It's nice. Still am, and Sam likes to insult people's religions. <laughs> sure. That's uh, uh, well, it's not, I don't feel good when a pedophile joke eats yeah. it, Mackie. I tried. You know? <laughs> well, I, just, I think you'd be used to jokes eating it. <laughs> <laughs> so were you torn between uh, Penn State and Notre Dame? Um, Catholic kids tend to 
root for Notre Dame. My grandfather was a big Notre Dame fan. Yeah. I I rooted for Penn State because I was from there, but yeah. I just kind of I lost interest in college sports, and it was way before the whole Sandusky scandal. It's just too corrupt. Yeah. Like I don't understand why they even pretend that the college football players are students. Some are, and it's not fair to paint everybody with the same brush. But all these teams that are winning, they're probably. They're probably doing some cheating. Oh, uh, it's 100%. It's too much money in it yeah. for not yeah. to be. And everybody's getting yeah. paid but the kids that are playing. Yeah. Right? Which is, seems That's crazy. Horrible. It is yeah. crazy because you, you can have a job in college at the school where you get paid. You work in like a pizzeria connected to the school or something. And then you're doing, you're giving your whole life to this and you're not seeing any money. Well, also now the, the colleges have turned into corporations right. where NYU, it's ridiculous. But Penn State, it's a huge amount of money now compared. When I was younger, you could go just drive up. If if you lived in Pennsylvania, they would say, look, just drive up and see if you're any good at college. You know what I mean? <laughs> you could basically go there, say, look, I'm here to take some classes. And if those, if you seem like you were doing okay, you were just enrolled into the school. There was zero pressure. Yeah. And now it's like kids when they're in ninth grade, like, I don't know what's going to happen to me. <laughs> yeah. And just to, just to be clear, like it, Penn State's very prestigious. <laughs> now you can't just, you can't just go there. You have to. Fill out paperwork. The, the thing was, it was prestigious enough then. It was a beautiful school. Yeah. It was in this great town, but it was a state college for the kids who lived in the state. It wasn't thought of this money making machine yeah. like all these colleges are. And they, well, when I was there, they were building these massive new dorms. Yeah. For to attract rich students. And a lot of those rich students are, are from foreign countries because they have to pay the full rate. Sure. So it's, yeah. it's, it's a recruiting game to attract people. Just to just to pay the pay the fare. Well, that that's the thing is why should they be making all this money and being able to build new buildings? I mean, you see, NYU is just swallowing up yeah. the yeah. village. Yeah, it's and also it's I remember the, you hear about who's that guy Shabazz Napier? Is that his name? He played for the Heat. He played for UConn. He was like a big college player. A couple years ago, he was talking about being like starving. He's a star college player. Right. He's like, I can't afford a meal. Yeah, and you're like that's that's insane. You watch the Fab Five documentary; it's the same thing. But you know, there always was money being thrown. I think it was Joe Namath, like when he went from Alabama to the New York Jets, and he he got the biggest contract ever. And they, I think he said, "I hate taking the cut and pay, but I'm willing." <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm willing to do it for the team because a lot of those guys, even back in the fifties, were just you know, oh yeah, he works at this job, but it was never true. Right. You know. Like Eric Dickerson had the sports car. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, how'd you get that? It's like, I'm not going to tell you. LeBron, oh. same thing, too. But it's like, can you blame these kids at all? I, Le I don't. LeBron was in high school. Yeah. LeBron was in high school, and the games used to be on TV. You're like, oh, on ESPN 2 tonight, you got to watch this kid. And you're like, well, why am I watching a high school game? Oh, I said, Cause why? Then, oh, because amazing. <laughs> then ESPN has to do the story. Are we focusing too much on high school sports now? <laughs> <laughs> Up next, LeBron James. <laughs> yeah, they're amazing. Of They're like, um, hey, the NFL is getting out of control. You're partners with them. I know. You're oh my, They partners. got rid of Bill Simmons for that reason. Because yeah. he would call them out for being corrupt. And they were like, oh, you got to leave. Well, they dropped out of the PBS documentary. Yeah. Uh, rather circumspect, saying they didn't have editorial control. Be a business like we weren't editing it yet. Yeah, <laughs> well, good... it would be like Chris doing a column about this show. <laughs> He's going. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be somewhat kind. Great what, show today. At, at what point are they going to fire Roger Goodell? Like, what does he have to? How how Ever. inept does he have to prove to be? I mean, they show how much. There was a chart the other day showing how much money they've lost since two thousand seven. Like, you know, incrementally. And and when does he get the? When does he get the boot? Well, they just uh, they're building a billion and a half dollar L A. Thing. Like, I don't understand why anyone should be making money. To me, owning a, a sports franchise. Is like giving money to a museum for the yeah. city. It should not be this thing of, hey, I, uh, th if you bought an NFL team and you could in the 80s for like $100 and $150 million, they're now over $2 billion. But yeah. it, the sports, is, sports has changed a lot since then because now, now cities are extorted into building yeah. these giant new stadiums with the luxury boxes. And you see all these great seats that are owned, that, that are bought by corporations at a tax write-off. Yeah. So, you know, to, to entertain clients. And then you go to a, a, a 
a Knicks game, and there's a lot of empty seats near the court side because all these people don't care. <laughs> yeah, they don't give a shit. What also is funny is it's taken away home field advantage. Like, yeah. it used to be if you went to Philadelphia to play the Eagles, it was a dangerous thing. <laughs> D.C. was yeah. crazy Glass fans. Glass bottles. Yeah. And now you'll, you'll, you'll watch these same two cities. When D.C. started losing uh, last weekend, just the, the fans left. They just... The season's over, you know, halfway through the fourth quarter. And those people you would stay. I still feel like Pittsburgh has the feel closer to the old days than most of the season. I don't, I don't yeah. feel that way about the Giants. Pittsburgh has the, the thing where people will the season tickets right. to family members. So it's, like, it's a much harder to ever get, <laughs> get yeah. in there. I think Green Bay still feels That's, like it's a Green home Bay, field like advantage. Yeah. 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 Lam- Lambeau, it's called they Lambeau, own it. right? They, yeah. own, the, they yeah. own the franchise, which is amazing. Now it's more dangerous leaving an Eagles game. <laughs> yeah, it's always been. It's uh, yeah, but I, I, it sucks for it sucks for St. Louis to lose the Rams, man. That's a good city, and they're a passionate like, sports city. Lose them again. Yeah, yeah. well, like, they lost the the. They had the Rams first back in like the early. Then they lost the Rams to L. A. Then they got the Cards. They lost them. Stole the Rams back. Now lost the Rams. But that's more of a baseball town. Yeah, yeah they a, they and love hockey baseball. too. They love their yeah. Blues too, but. But yeah, you feel bad for any kid living in any town knowing that the team's moving away. It's sad. Yeah. I feel bad. But at least if you're in L.A. you'll and you see the Raiders and Rams leave, you're like, they'll be back. <laughs> well, the thing about L.A. is they don't. They weren't really going to games anyway. There's a lot. The th- I lived in Tampa, and if that team wasn't winning, people would just go, let's go out on your boat. You know what I mean? Like, they weren't yeah. freaked out. When you live in Cleveland, you need the Browns. When you lived in Pittsburgh years ago, you needed the Steelers to just give you some positive thing in your life. Yeah. <laughs> you live in Miami or Tampa, what do you give a shit? A lot people of, in L.A., they don't care. A lot of transplants live yeah. out there, so it's like they're rooting for, they move from Pittsburgh, they're still rooting for the Steelers. Dude, there are Pittsburgh Steeler bars everywhere in the country. Yeah. And those people, they act like... Like, I don't know, like they were Polish Jews run out of their country. The, the love that they, they, like, they would still live in Pittsburgh if, if things hadn't changed, you know? But they, they sit around and talk about Pittsburgh like it was the old country. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I, love, I love that kind of passion. And then, and then after a while, you realize you're like, what am I running from, really? Because, yeah. like, like, you're like putting away, you have like real life problems, and then you, like, the game's over, and you're like, oh, shit. Oh, God. Yeah. I gotta, that's right. I got to, like, raise my kid. <laughs> <laughs> he hates me. I don't want to ask him about it, but I'm pretty sure he's on crack. I don't know. I'll just see what happens after the season. I'm going to talk to him. <laughs> hey, Rusty. All right. There he goes. <laughs> Sam Rowe and Joe Mack, you're in studio. Joe Mackey's performing at the Hartford Funny Bone in Hartford, Connecticut, tonight through Sunday, January 17th. Sam Morell's performing at the St. Louis Funny Bone, February 3rd through the 6th. Go to funnybone.com for tickets and more information. Sam Morell's album, Class Act, is available now on iTunes and Amazon.com. And Sam's podcast, the We Know Nothing podcast, is available on iTunes. A couple people said, how come Ridiculous 6 did not make that list? But that was released to Netflix. So Uh I don't think you can... Call that a, a straight movie. Yeah, oh. was that supposed to be like a Magnificent Seven spoof? Yeah. It looked pretty awful. Yeah. Who was in that? Um, Sandler and his friends. Okay. You know, Sandler and who, all the guys that he first met when he went to L.A. They were with him every day. <laughs> it's like, he, when he wants to have a party, he just makes another grown-ups. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gets a new car. It's great. <laughs> that is a, that's a good gift bag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? You wanna, what are you doing? You want to make a movie? Do we have a script? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like really great for his buddies until you know he gets mad at you one day <laughs> and everything changes seems like he doesn't get that mad he seems no. like he keeps the same crew around he's not like Elvis where Elvis would be like Red, what did you just say? And everybody would <laughs> shit themselves. Red's out. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Fuck you, Red. The other friends just start. I never liked Red. 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 <laughs> I saw him do the new Hanukkah song. It was funny. I thought, you know, I mean, he's still live as a funny guy. But yeah, he just well, you know, he's had a, a, a tremendous career for his audience. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like his aud- there's very few people who've ever made comedies that had people show up for decades. Yeah. Like that. But, the, you know, he doesn't give a shit about the credits. He cares about when those people stop caring, he made a Netflix deal, yeah. which is tremendously big. And yeah. it was like the number one watch Netflix <laughs> Most movie. streamed. 
Most yeah. streamed. Uh, even of regular mainstream movies. Yeah. There was like seven diarrhea jokes in the trailer, so I was yeah. like, I'm guessing there's at least 17 <laughs> in the actual movie. Yeah. <laughs> They're playing down the diarrhea. They're saving some. But. Well, that's when they brought out the frothy diarrhea joke. <laughs> oh, it was really... I actually stood up and was just like, yeah. Oh my God! Bullshit <laughs> 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 jokes! Fucking high-fiving people I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's like, he'll like tease you. Sam will like yeah. tease you with like a funny piece or yeah. like a punch drunk love and you're like damn he's got like kind of there's something he's got like a vulnerability to him yeah. where you're like there, there's something there and then he like <laughs> makes this and you're like ah oh, come on man it looks like mark zito has brought his family to <laughs> yeah, really. uh, work today oh now i know he's saying something bad about us because <laughs> he's laughing and they're waving <laughs> oh, no. i don't know what's been going on but we've been getting tons of Tours, visitors. Yes. We have a lot of yeah. visitors. Does really feel like you're in the zoo right now. It's a, it's a it very is. Weird. I feel like throwing my poop against the <laughs> uh, the window. <laughs> it, it like sometimes a tiger will just run up and act like he's going to attack. A lot of them are making eye contact. They don't yeah, know. I know. This is uncomfortable. They don't know how dangerous we are. Well, because we don't know what he's saying. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it could be anything. This guy's not a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> we, like, we should do a bet, and then one of you guys has to do five minutes for him. Because it's really, it's like a Wednesday at most suburban comedy clubs oh, coming God. by right now. <laughs> Another strip mall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, F following the guitar act. Was uh, <laughs> I was at a club last year, and the, and the bartender was like, "Hey, can you uh, can you take out the urinal cakes?" And I was like, "I'm the fucking headliner." <laughs> oh and she was like, "So no?" And I was like, "Yeah, definitely no. I'm not doing." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> she, I think she just thought I worked for the club. I was like, "What the fuck?" No. Wait, wait, was that before the show or after the show? <laughs> 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 Let's leave it there. We're not going to. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's it. Once again, Joe wins. <laughs> He's the handsome God Walt. damn it. The Vault is back. <laughs> you won't find this combination. <laughs> Troubles on your vulnerability every time. That's why Sandler's not vulnerable. <laughs> Joe Mackey and Sam Rell. Joe Mackey's performing at the Hartford Funny Bone tonight through Sunday, January 17th. Sam Rell's performing at the St. Louis Funny Bone, February 3rd through the 6th. Go to funnybone.com for tickets. Sam's album, Class Act, is available now on iTunes and Amazon.com. Sam's podcast, the We Know Nothing podcast, is available now on iTunes. And uh, if these two don't get a show together, America suffers. Because they, yeah. as funny as they are apart, there is something crazy <laughs> that happens when they're together. <laughs> uh, by the way, Gail, you put up something uh, today with the crazy putty girl. Uh, yes, it's a girl who's internet social media stalking her ex-boyfriend and finds that he is... He has found new love, and the level of psychotic breakdown that happens with this girl is... This is what I want you to watch, Joe. We could get... Yeah. Yeah. What's, get what, what's the name of it again? <laughs> <laughs> He's so sincere. He's got the pen out. Yeah. This is great. What is she doing, Chris? She's uh, she's texting. She's okay. uh, She's on her phone. And her friend videotaped this? Yes, her friend was taping her and captures, uh, I think, a breakdown, a, okay. an actual mental breakdown. I want to watch a little bit of it. <laughs> so she's saying they're Facebook. Yeah. It's like there's always good light around her. Oh, she makes water. She makes really mediocre watercolor paintings. <laughs> oh, <God>. Scary. <laughs> oh, I was so in love with him. Is she a? <laughs> she's a model. <laughs> This is like the broadcast scene where Jack Nicholson's the Joker. Yeah. Yeah. She's definitely a model. Look at this picture. <laughs> She's a model. <laughs> I'm just sitting here in my shitty apartment. <laughs> Our key doesn't even work. I met her and he works. She lives in California. She doesn't even, oh, she doesn't even need heat. <laughs> Scary. Yeah, it's scary. I bet her apartment is really nicely decorated. <laughs> Look at all these watercolors. Oh, God. <laughs> Joe, soak up these laughs. There's going to be nowhere to be found tonight. Huh? <laughs> No, I, I've gotten a lot of messages like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it reminds me of is like, the the worst kind of breakup is when you're still in school, so you still see that other person, oh. and then you also you have your new girlfriend. 
from school. Right. So you're walking along and Hey guys, <laughs> yeah. what's up? <laughs> you just see someone glaring at her and your friend's like, You're a dick. <laughs> now you guys know me since third grade. Why am I dick now? <laughs> I was stuck in a gender communication seminar with a girl that broke up with me and oh. it was just it was all women and me. I was the only guy in the class. <laughs> so she would just take passive aggressive shots at me and like we make it like the article, but they all would just stare at me every time she spoke. It was painful. <laughs> how, how, how bad a grade did you get in that class? <laughs> I got an A, Joe, because uh I fight in the face of adversity. So Now remember, uh, and Sam has been not only cleared of any kind of spousal abuse, but we found out that he was the hero. So I, I was think the that, hero. that needs to be pointed we out. Need to, we don't even need to say my name in the same sentence as spousal abuse. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> Let's saying. not even do that. Sam's, well. Sam's a great guy, terrible comedian. Just keep that. <laughs> it's the only abuse I'm involved in is verbal against Joe Mackey. <laughs> oh, you're acting. You know what? Can't you kids see that you love each yeah, other? I love you, Sam. Him. I love you, but it's, it's a love hate Hug thing, Joe. All right. Oh, oh, See you guys all again in 1974. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the evening is over. We hope you all enjoyed yourselves, and we'll see you all again in 1974. Good evening! Yeah.